Clark, so I'm going to uh, call this meeting to order. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So, um, if our bylaws permit uh, Trustee Derblick to attend the meeting by phone. Um, I haven't heard her. I understand she's called in once before tonight, so we know the phone is working. Is that correct? Is correct. It, um, and I anticipate she will probably call in again, at which point you can know in the minutes when, when she does call in again. Um, so, would you uh, take the roll? Aaron? Yes. Uh, Dennis? Yes. Diane? Here. Katie? Here. Linda? Here. Tim? Here. Okay, we have two sets of minutes to approve tonight. Uh, do I hear a motion to approve the minutes of a regular board meeting of April 18, 2018? So moved. Second. Okay. Any comments or corrections? All right, would you please take a roll call? Uh, here. I'm going to abstain because I was not at that meeting. Uh, Dennis? Yep. Diane? Yes. Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. 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 And then I need a motion to approve the minutes of the special board meeting of May 2nd, 2018. Do I have such a motion? Motion. Second. Okay. Any comments or corrections? Hey, I have one correction myself. Um, under which says new business, the sentence that begins at the end. So at the end of the discussion, President Diamond asked the board members if they would like to request any additional information. She reminded them that Trustee Diamond, they think that should be Trustee Durbleck, requested a copy of the data uh, based usage chart. So with the movement and the second year, accept that amendment to yes. the. Definitely. Definitely. Any other correct, corrections or uh, changes that need to be made? Nope, hearing none, I'm going to take a roll. Karen? Yes. Dennis? Yeah. Diane? Yeah. Katie? Yes. Linda? Yes. Tim? Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Um, tonight, we have a special guest from the Village of Niles with us, Ross Clicker, the Economic Development Coordinator for the Village of Niles. And we've invited him because, of course, we are physically located within the Village of Niles. Not all of our district is located in the Village, but our library is certainly within it. We're right across the street. Things we do affect the village, and things the village does affects us. So, uh, in the interest of continuing good relations with the village of Niles and learning more about what they're doing uh, that may affect us and vice versa, um, we've asked for us to come here tonight. And given that. Hello. Hello. Hi, this is Caroline. Hi, Caroline. How are you? Uh, we can hear you well. Uh, can you hear me? I'm sorry. Can you yes. hear me, Carolyn? Yes. Okay, good. Uh, we're just starting now with our special guest from the village, Ross Clicker, uh, Economic Development Coordinator for the Village of um, uh, Niles. And since he's our guest tonight, we're um, going to take him at the beginning of our agenda. And Ross, would you like to say a few words to the board uh, sure. about uh, what's going on in the village? Sure, certainly. Um, you said, my name is Ross Clicker. I'm the Economic Development Coordinator for the Village of Niles. Um, outside of what, uh, I just wanted to make everything clear here um, that outside of anything that I'm talking about, projects that the village are, are, are working on, any opinions or thoughts that I might give as to how the library and the village might coordinate on economic development efforts are my opinions. They are not necessarily that of the village. Now, with that said, yes, I am the economic development coordinator for the village. I was hired for this role, and the reason I was hired was because of my professional expertise and background in what I've done. Just so you all know, I have been working in municipal government for 26 years now uh, in various roles of community development, and over the last 11, I have had the role of involving directly in economic development. Um, so, with that, I can give a brief background of what the village is working on. Some things that you may have heard about, some things that you may have seen, and some things that you may have heard some rumors on. Um, 
first of all, the, with the village is working on, on many projects throughout the village, big projects that are going to be, we hope, transforming about the village. Uh, we're working very hard and, and, and diligently on the two-week corridor plans, which are, well, we've, we've got a mixed-use entertainment district that is established around, what we hope to establish around the Leaning Tower. The village now does actually own, physically own the Leaning Tower. We purchased it from the YMCA in the last year for $10. We've been maintaining it since 1996, so it only makes sense that we actually own the structure. Um, with that, we, we envision a mixed-use entertainment district, a community gathering spot, if you will, uh, focused around the Lane Tower, and we are making great strides towards that. We've been working with developers. We have a land use plan in place. We've been working with developers, talking with them, and maybe you have heard it just recently at the last village board meeting. The village board did authorize us to go under contract and purchase a property within the 2 week corridor. Uh, the mold, the, we call it the Granger property. It's a directly across the street from Costco on Novina. It's an 8.5 acre site. The village is under contract to purchase that site so that we can help direct the redevelopment of that area so that it fulfills our vision and our common goals of improving the community. <coughs> Another project that we're working on is uh, a few years ago, the village bought uh, the 9101 Greenwood Bank Building, immediately adjacent to Golf Mill Mall. We bought it for stormwater purposes. It's immediately adjacent to Golf Mill Park, too, if you're, if you're wondering, if you're trying, to get, if you're trying to narrow that back down for you, because I've seen a few looks of where is that building? Um, we bought it for stormwater purposes. Uh, as you know, the village has embarked on many stormwater programs throughout the village, or hopefully you know, uh, the Cleveland Storm Sewer, the detention basin over at Our Lady of Ransom, and the, uh, I'm sorry, yes, uh, and the detention basin in Mary, Mary Hill Cemetery. Uh, those have all drastically improved stormwater in the central and southern portion of the village. This is a project that we hope will improve the northern portion of the village, their stormwater aspects. However, we don't just want to dig a hole in the ground and fill it with water. What we envision for that is uh, the changing face of retail and environment in general of a village is that you need to have a destination environment for people to come to your village, to be excited about the village, to want to invest into the village. So what we want to do is turn that detention facility into a festival ground and we're adjacent immediately adjacent to golf mill park so we we're hoping to partner with the park district in creating an entertainment or a, a permanent festival grounds if you will but an interactive enlivened space for recreation and attraction so the place where we can have art fairs uh, farmers markets uh, on a regular basis the, the festivals that we do have up there now the SS Laratania festival the Polish festivals that are going to go on this summer um, a permanent location for them that's designed and specifically set up for them. It's a big ambitious project. It's probably many years in the works, but it is something that we're working on. And again, we need to create those destination environments to remain vital, to remain active, and in that respect, that's where we look to the partnerships with the library, with the park district, with the other institutions in this village, so that we can all improve our stock, the right, you know, theory being rising tide, rising tide floats all boats. So if the library can, it has great programming and can improve the attractiveness of the community, example is the Civil War uh, display you have going on right now with the Cubs Sox, that is a fantastic display that I've been hearing people from outside the community that are coming to take a look at it, and these are the types of things that I believe really help the economic development efforts of the village and the community development efforts of the village. Community development, just for a lot of people think, well, that's you know building permits, that's getting things along in that nature. Well, my background, I'll go just briefly into that. My, my undergraduate degree is in community and regional planning. I have a master's degree in what is called community development. Community development is more than just making sure people can get building permits and making sure that new businesses are coming into the vacant spots. It's exploring and examining your community to look at the capitals of your community to make sure that they're all strong. And part of those, uh, some of those capitals are financial, some of them are political, some of them are cultural. I would put the library in more of that cultural capital. The stronger we have of a cultural capital, the stronger community we have, and therefore making everybody's job that much easier to make sure that Niles and the Niles and the Main Township Library, or the, I'm sorry, <laughs> the, 
the Niles, Niles Main Library <laughs> remain as strong as possible. Um, so just when, when you look at, at things that the library does from an economic development standpoint, now this is where I'm really getting into my opinion, I want that to be clear. Um, something you should also know about my background just a little bit, my father-in-law <coughs> is Mike Mann. If you're not familiar with the name Mike Mann, I'm sure you know the library that he ran for 40 years, which is the Schomburg Township yeah. Library. Um, I, so I've seen firsthand what libraries can do to enliven a community by talking to my father-in-law, by seeing the programs he's done, and initiated the buildings and facilities that he helped design. Um, and I can proudly say, I see a lot of those same things here in Niles. In fact, I see things that are even better than what Chandra Township has done. The Score Small Business Center, from an economic development standpoint, is phenomenal. I'm always out there trying to get that next generation of businesses, those next startups coming in, and that person who's been sitting there working on an idea at their kitchen table may not know exactly how to get going. And that Score Small Business Center is fabulous. It's something that most libraries don't have. It's something that allows us as a community to say, to truly take the, the, the tagline and the model of the Village of Niles, which is, if you're not familiar with it, it's possible here. It truly takes that and puts life to that statement. It's possible here because we're going to support you in your in your endeavors, whether it be recreational, whether it be cultural, whether it be economic. We're going to support you. We're going to make it possible in this community. The Maker's Studio is another fantastic example of that. Business, small businesses maybe want to start a new product line. They want to start a new product. They want to start a new design phase. Whatever it may be. They now have an opportunity where they don't have to go out and make a huge investment and get loans with for equipment on something that maybe they're just not sure is going to work. The Maker's Lab really allows them to come in and test that theory out. Work with the library, work with the village on becoming a more successful business endeavor. And that's, again, only something, in my opinion, that makes the community, makes the library, makes the residents, makes the businesses, everybody in our community that much stronger and better for that. So I do know you do have a long agenda here tonight. I don't want to take up a lot of your time, but if anybody does have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them at this point. I have a question. So I understand your job is not just attracting new businesses Correct. in Iowa, but there, I think that's part of it. Is that Correct. It? Certainly it's attracting businesses and, and tax dollars to Correct. Iowa. So uh, property tax values, probably sales tax dollars. Yes. And, and just to make sure our residential stock is paid. And that's where, again, economic development is not just looking at, at, at commercial entities. It is looking at the housing stock. It is looking at the, the, the demographic makeup of the community to make sure that, that we remain strong. And when we're trying to attract in young families with kids coming into this area, the institutions mm -hmm. of the park district, the library, uh, the schools, are what they look at and what they truly value as important to them. And again, I've worked in several communities throughout my career, and I can honestly say, for a family value, I have come across no community like Niles that has what this community has. The library, the park district, the teen center, the senior center, the family services, the free bus, the list goes on and on and on. And the fact that all of the districts involved in Niles are able to do that at really a very economical level for the resident for the property taxpayer, I mean, it's absolutely phenomenal. Does anyone else have any other comments or questions of uh, Mr. Parker? The uh, property taxes in Niles, how do they compare with surrounding communities? We're one of the lowest. We, when, when you break down your property taxes in Niles, um, you know, when you, schools are the largest portion of anybody's property mm -hmm. tax bill. But when you go to those extra districts, those extra services that are involved, such a minor portion of the property tax bill. Between the library, the park district, and the village, I believe the share of the property tax bill is about 8%. So With all these, not, all these tips that are going on and, uh, and uh, the 240 some odd million that are going to be for the schools going on, that's going to still keep us in that lowest. Tip districts, again, do not impact the outside the district's property taxes. What they do is, 
let's say a district has an area that's designated as a TIF district has a million dollars that are collected in property taxes for all the taxing bodies in there. That million dollars is still distributed to all the taxing bodies. The only thing that the TIF district does is if there's development and the value now increases, it's that's that whole, in, isn't it? yes, it's that increase in value that can be reinvested back into the district yeah. to encourage additional development. Yeah. So that's yes, it freezes the amount of property taxes that comes out of the district, but it doesn't freeze the amount of property tax that comes to any individual taxing body. The taxing bodies set their levies. The levies are then distributed equally amongst the available equal equalized assessed value by the assessor, and that's what establishes a like property tax. So it doesn't impact the library in any way. As no, as no, as sir. Anything. In fact, actually, if you may have seen, we are contemplating a new TIF district uh, for right here at the intersection of Waukegan and, and Oakton. And one of the properties that the village is proposing to put into that facility is the library property. For the main reason, the types of developments that we've been talking to developers are on are developments that we believe could potentially impact the service level of the library. Meaning that what we're looking, what the developers are coming and proposing to us are more senior living and assisted living facilities. So with the library in such close proximity, we understand that those uses may impact the library. Now, if that were to put a strain on the library's services or physical structure, meaning maybe you need additional handicap accessibility or something along that nature, being within the TIF district would allow the village to contribute to those costs so that the entire taxpayer uh, base of the, of the library district is not burdened with those expenses caused by the one development. I'm sorry, say again, you, you said something about a library, the very beginning of what you just said, that this development area. Right, the one tip district that we're proposing in, it physically includes the library property. That is the border of the TIF district. Correct. Uh -huh. Okay, but we're not our, we're not affected in terms of we don't pay property. You don't pay property taxes, oh, so, but what it allows, okay. what but being with the physical property being in the yes. TIF district mm -hmm. allows yes. is for if the development that happens negatively impacts or strains the impact or the services of the library, it would allow the district, the TIF district, to contribute to those costs so that it's not put on as a burden of the entire taxing block district. I believe the uh, tax of the village, the park district, and the library is about 15 percent. 15 minutes? Yeah, I, I would. 16, somewhere in that nature. Okay. It's, not, it's not 8 percent. Okay. Does it's still quite a bargain, in my opinion. Do any of the board members have uh, any other questions? Okay. All right. Thank, thank you very thank much. You very well, much. if anybody has any other questions, you know, again, feel free to contact me anytime. And uh, like I said, I don't want to take up a lot of your time. I appreciate the invitation. Okay. What's your phone number? I'll give you my card. Thank you for your time. I'll leave a couple. Of, oops, I only have a couple here, but you okay. make sure that Great. everybody gets those. Thank you. We'll, uh, Thanks. Yeah. Anybody has questions, feel free to contact me. All right. So thank you, thank and you I'll, I'll let you go. Thank, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For the update. Okay. Um, has anyone registered for public comment? Or can we do a couple of people? Uh, Mr. Joe Marcula, your name is first on the list. Marcula, would you, Mr. Marcula, would you like to step up? Um, you're going to be working on the budget now. And very important is to do things efficiently and not waste money. I, I think we're wasting a lot of money on the school visits because there's... Um, Nobody can measure the outcomes of these things. The schools have libraries, librarians, teachers. Maybe instead of sending somebody out to drive to the school, make arrangements to get there, spend time with the kids, take them away from the math class or something, maybe we should have a, a printout given to the parents because a seven-year-old kid isn't going to decide that you know they want to go to the library. It's, it's the parents that take them there. So I think it's a printed sheet would, would be more appropriate to be sent home with the kids rather than waste a lot of time and labor. And people going to these uh, events here are, are not our low-end labor people. They're people that are in the, one of the higher brackets that we're paying. Um, another thing is we have all these programs, 159 programs. There should be some that could be consolidated, because some of them only have attendance of four or five people. Uh, 
when you take all of these and the times they run through the year, it's over 5,000 events. This is so large, it's, it's really unmanageable. Uh, and again, most of the people running these programs are not on the low end salary category. They're not, um, they're in the third or fourth category down. So they're, they're getting probably $25 an hour for this time. Plus the time they set up uh, all of these things. So that's my presentation. Um, you, you're going to be working on the budget. I, there's no reason that this budget couldn't be cut 5% with the same outcome of what's going on here. It's just going to take time. People have to look into these things and see where the waste is or where there's duplicity. Okay, thank you, Mr. McClure. Um, next on our list for public participation is Dennis Martin. Mr. Martin? <coughs> Dennis Martin, 8706 uh, Osceola, Niles, Illinois. Uh, what I did is, I'm, I'm kind of a graphical guy, I like to see uh, things, uh, because we're working on the budget, I, I did graphs here. So essentially what I did is, uh, down the side here, I took all the numbers from uh, Greg Pritz and, uh, and Susan's uh, uh, presentation that they did last week and kind of uh, noted them here. Uh, all of the numbers here, uh, this one being uh, the, the longest, it being the salary outline. Uh, and then you also have uh, employee fringe benefits, Social Security, unemployment compensation, and workman's compensation. All the ones with market stars really come down into that area of employee costs. So I said, let's kind of take a look at uh, three areas. So I said, let's focus on uh, three, three main areas of spend uh, for really almost uh, 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 our $7.4 million uh, budget. And again, uh, in the green area, in the green area here, you can see it's 63% uh, for uh, uh, library employee costs. And uh, I pulled all this information from our, our packet for uh, the budget. Uh, the uh, library uh, materials is uh, really, uh, I, what I understand is under budget, uh, because I heard last week that you're supposed to do 12% of the budget. So we're sitting at 10%. Uh, the rest of it I kind of lumped capital operating expenditures, general admin building, because really I wanted to show the huge cost of the taxpayer money going to employees to run the library. So uh, what, I'm, what I'm asking or proposing is that uh, the trustees discuss and vote on a 5% cut in the proposed budget. I'm saying let's lighten the load on taxpayers in Niles Main Library District. I re recommend we take a closer look at that 772,000 uh, for library materials. You know, should we should we be increasing that? Should we have different things in there? Uh, I'm asking uh, to cut the money for new furniture and fixtures which is currently budgeted at uh, $44,680. I said, let's place a freeze on library employees. No increase uh, this year. The uh, potential increase this year for all of the uh, salary increases, $102,000. I say, let's go green in our environment. Let's phase out, over the next two years, our Chapter 1. We're... we're we're, we're, we're going green all over the place. A lot of businesses have gone green, eliminating a lot of things. And uh, so if you phase that out, you could eliminate $26,000 for the printing. And then lump on whatever you want for the, the actual delivery of it. Uh, I'm saying let's cut $26,000 in promotional, promotional spending for Christmas tree lights, t-shirts, giveaways and events, uh, things of that nature. $26,000. $1,000. I say let's uh, cut adjustment line items that will be used in part for paying out bonuses. It's $10,000. I recommend let's cut the trustee funding to zero. Let's cut out time and a half on Sundays for employees. UPS is in, in, currently in the talks uh, for uh, eliminating that in their business. Eliminate comp time for uh, salaried employees. Uh, 
increase uh, employee employment payments to their uh, uh, employee payments to their health care plan, uh, eliminate one vacation day or holiday for library staff, which will reduce annual salary costs. Uh, so again, you know, this is a, a, a document that I, I pulled out about UPS actually talking about wanting to change their uh, priorities and uh, shift from going time and a half on the weekend. And so I'm saying, can we really afford to pay time and a half on Sundays at the library with all of the other benefits, the fringe benefits, the days off, the vacation days, the holidays, and... Uh, are these things we can do? So I said, uh, well, here's the munchkins. And I said, that's okay. At the library, we can just pull out our uh, taxpayer credit card. And essentially, that's what we're going to do. Because we're going to go ahead and let all these things go through. And then we're going to go ahead and say, oh, well. Um, the your time is up for public comments. There's a board member. You can continue to make other comments during our Yeah, discussion. I, I understand we're supposed to have time today to talk about the budget. We are going to talk about budget today. My question in general as a board member is, my understanding was, I realize Dennis has done this a couple of times, my understanding was that as a board member, we really were not supposed to speak during public comment that we were supposed to speak during the meeting. Am I wrong with that assumption? Um, I don't think there's any rule prohibiting board okay. members from I just was speaking, curious. although they, of course, can speak during the meeting itself. So I was clear. just curious, because I was under the assumption that that was the rule, but if it's not, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for clarifying. I appreciate it. If you want any information, I got it for you. OK. Um, did you bring copies of that for anyone else? Uh, no, I, I, I okay. have one for the newspaper guy. Um, it would have been nice if you thought to share that. Well, yeah, you know, it took a lot of my time. I'm getting paid zero for this job. So, so. are all the rest of us. It's an elementary position. It's an elective. Yeah. Did you think it was a salary? I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, since we're done with the public comment section, we'll now move on to the treasurer's report. Okay. Thank you. So uh, our... Is there a page you want us to turn to? Yeah, it starts on page 11. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I'm trying to keep you up. And um, it's really pretty straightforward. You guys probably all reviewed the whole thing. So um, really we're at the 10th month, 83% of the way through. Uh, page 11, our revenues, uh, we're at 98% of the budget, so we're looking really good there. Uh, property taxes, same as last month, essentially. So we did get our per capita grant to 44478 so that's really good. Um, and our investment income is doing better than we thought, which is really wonderful. Thank you, uh, Greg, very much. Uh, the year to date is 10 grand more than we budgeted for the entire year. So uh, we look for that to, uh, to be a great uh, benefit for the end of the year. And our salaries continue to be under budget uh, by about 93000 so thank you, Susan and Greg, for holding the line on that. That's wonderful. Page 12. Uh, really, there's not a lot here. Um, library materials are under budget. Um, there's variance for special, specific line items. But I'm, I'm sorry, it's exactly on budget. Operating expenses, basically the same as last month. Under budget, about 94000 uh, Page 13. General and admin under budget by $29,000. Um, and, and, and I'm just flipping through because we're really in good shape. Uh, page 14, fringe benefits, same as last month. Uh, I won't even go into details on that, same as what we talked about last month. And page 15 is as similar as last month. Uh, everything is only under budget except workers' comp. But that was a one time expenditure, so it's not spread over. And our total expenditures are running about 9.5% under budget. So good job all the way around. Okay. Any uh, questions or comments regarding the financial statements and the review that was just presented by uh, Tim? Yes. Tim. Carolyn, are you, are you saying something? Yes. You're breaking is this, up. Is this when I can ask questions about the check detail? Sure, go ahead, Carolyn. All right, um, I, um, 
I was going through these pages and I noticed it seems that we've cut a lot more checks this month than we had in some time and a large number of them are from materials. So I'm thinking if our budget was low in any of these aspects, looking at all these checks, I'm, I'm trying to figure out where are we now in terms of Use, using the entire budget amount or having somewhat of a budget left. Um, that's my one concern, but then I have specific questions about this check register. I noticed the majority for a lot of these purchases are from Ingram Library Services, and the description is just material. Okay, so there's no identification as to what books were bought for teens, what books were bought for adults, we just repeat the same category. So how do you relate to what you actually bought? So the invoices. So is, is there a reason why that description can't be transferred to the report? Is it not part of your purchasing um, system? that dumps into this check register? It, it would, if we were to do that, it would increase the check register to be uh, hundreds of pages every month, and it would, and it's a level of detail that the board simply doesn't need. Uh, well, I actually, I'd like to know, know what they're they spending all of these checks on instead of the word material. If you look at the column for description, it must have room for 60 characters. So are you asking for the names of the book? There. You want the name of the book? For each item. It's eight I want to know what was purchased for well, one fifty two three hundred dollars. Well, they're books for you. To, I mean, there's a line item, and it's books, or else it says A B. So then you know it's either something. Okay. All right. If I can have the floor, to no, I, can I just don't out. understand what you're asking. Right. Okay. Well, then if you let me speak, I'll make it very clear. Okay, okay. okay. Carolyn, yeah, this, yeah. this is our can't question. You create a budget with eleven thousand dollars worth of expenses and call them all materials. I'm saying I think there must be a description on some document that this is generated from. Carolyn, and maybe we can, yes. Are you looking at the third column? The third column tells you what types of materials uh, are purchased. Uh, where, where the description is not filled out. Right under account description. She's looking right here. Okay, now account oh. description is telling me you what know, department. Look is on page 23, 24. And 25 okay, can I no, and 26. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Um, I need okay. to tell you that you describe the material you're purchasing. I already know the department that's being charged for the purchase. I'm saying it's not good practice to use words like materials, generalizations for thousands of dollars of purchases. Give and us an example of what you want. Give us an example. Okay, it's, you know what, I don't think it's that complicated. Well, what did you purchase for materials? You have to have a description. There has to be a difference between line number one for $152.41 called materials and line number two for $40.02 called materials. It's not even a logical way to list Expenses. Look at the so Carolyn, Carolyn, have you looked at pages 23 through 26? All the third column. General, okay, excuse me. I'm just saying we should not have a budget that consists of generalization. It's so difficult for us to understand our budget. If we could receive descriptions in our items, we wouldn't need more information from the administration. It would already be presented. Carolyn? I'm saying where you put the word materials, if you could expand, it would be helpful. How much of an expansion do you expect? A description. Okay. I'm sure you know, when, you, when you get an invoice, they're only allowed so many characters. So they've already figured out how to abbreviate descriptions. It's used all over. Everyone does this. It's not something that you would be creating from scratch. It's just a common practice. But that was one thing. Then they okay, well, Carolyn, let's, oh, let's stay on one thing let's, before we go on. Let's just stop on the one right. thing. Okay. So let's decide as a board if we want the staff to expand the description of materials for uh, book purchases to include every book that's purchased on each line item. Is that what you're requesting, right? 
I'm asking that a description of the purchase for that check be detailed better than just the word material. Right. Okay. So, go ahead. All right, may I? Uh, yes, absolutely. May I have a Yes, you okay. may. Then, if I'm understanding you correctly, Carolyn, you just have a problem with the description column. You don't have a problem with the account description problem. You just have a problem with the definition of materials. Am I correct? With the description of what the item is, yes. Okay, so what you're asking is of Susan and, um, oh my God, I'm, I'm losing my word. Uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> And I had a long day. Um, what the definition of materials is, and I'm just assuming, and I'm going to have, let them have the floor, is materials actually denotes to books, A, B, and Okay, whatever. that's not so, good enough. But I'm just you know, saying, I, what, no, can I just let them... Wait, 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 the floor now. Let them, let them explain what materials is, because that's really an important key here in, in order for us to even think we need to move forward or not. So what is the definition of materials? to you guys. Materials are all of the things that are purchased for the collection, so it would be every book, every DVD, every Blu-ray, and the combination of those all make up. So one of these lines might be $335.74 might be 10 different titles, say. And so, you know, it would take a great deal more time for those titles to be entered into our financial software so that they could be spit back out. Um, and so the, so the description that we give you is that it's in a category of materials so that it would, might be an adult book. So they're grouped in that way, but they're not uh, pulled out more specifically than that. I see, I mean, they're in so the blue box. Can the I ask right a question? There. Sure. If once you, after all this purchasing is done, how do you know what you purchased? You have invoices yeah. that maybe are stuffed in a box. None of your computerized programs detail anything you do. So it's not in your invoicing or whatever in your purchasing. It doesn't end up on your check register. And we know it can never then end up in a budget report. What I'm trying to say is there has to be a feasible way to do this because just like a school who purchases hundreds and hundreds of books like you do, there's a way to categorize and describe. And even in budget outlines for different schools, different companies, they tell you specifically that you need details. You cannot use generalizations for blanket requests. There has to be a procedure, a process, an abbreviation that can better identify all the money you spend. You can't use one word to describe 10,000 purchases. Okay, it's Carolyn, can, Carolyn, can we stop you? We need to ask Greg and Susan their opinion. I think we're clear on what you want. So let's uh, give Greg and Susan's opinion on whether or not we can do this. And then let's decide as a board if that's how we want to move forward. Well, Susan? as I said, it would require a great deal of additional data entry into the system. And I don't see what the purpose of that would be. We do have, you know, when the box of books comes, it gets opened up, it gets matched against the POs, and then it's in the packet in there. I see the full list of books. Uh, people are keeping track of it, and they're all cataloged. They go in the, in the computer in that way. They just start entered one at a time into the financial software. They're entered just as a general description. And I don't, I've never heard of a place that did it differently from that. Okay. Just yes. from my Please. experience being a librarian, I mean, and being the district librarian, we do, we have a line item that is just library materials. That is what all of our books, A, B, come out. We also have a line item that says magazines. We also have a line item that says databases. So yes, all of our $22,000 that we have is just called materials for that we use for books. Then so we have a supplies line item. So Are you describing the line item or the description? The line the item is just called library materials that we buy all of our books out of, and that is mm -hmm. all that we... But the thing is, one thing that um, maybe you don't know, like when we order from Ingram or um, Follett, if you do happen to buy a book that you've already previously bought, it'll give you a like, heads up saying, hey, this was in a previous list. Or So everything is kept online by the jobbers. So that doesn't solve our problem, though. 
We have well, a case. So, I'm sorry. I don't think we have a problem. Well, let's say our problem, Carol. Yeah, I mean, I'm just saying that everything is in the invoicing that we can look at any time. And, and yes, other places, as schools, we do just have a line item called materials. So, so that's all I have to say. And I'm not talking about the line, budget line item. I'm talking about the check line item. But let's, let's take it a step further. So we can't well, wait a minute. Well, wait, no, no, wait no, there are other people that have Yeah, let's focus on one thing at a time. Yeah. Resolve it, have everybody say it or say it. Patty, you had your hand up for a while. No, I'm. Okay. Put my hand up. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, so I have a, a, a question, Carolyn. So, if they were to change material to what they purchased, so so is but but it's, it, there's multiple. Is there is it one purchase? Is it is it like is that the title of a, a book? Or are you doing multiple purchases? So for like sixty five dollars. Could that be multiple books? Could be yes. One. Could, be one. could be one. Or yeah, it could be two books. I mean, they're not that cheap, but it's 2018. So, so what's the, the thing is, there's got to be a better description than just the word material. Okay, but Carolyn, we understand that. Let's let Dennis talk now. Yeah, so, so I'm just trying to, I want to understand, what's, what's the value we have? So, so say we put down uh, the pirate on the uh, Blackbeard ship. The so, so now we put that in there. Help, help me understand uh, what's that going to do for us now. Okay, if you wanted to know what did what are we purchasing next year? What did we purchase last year in the A B T department for books or youth services? Someone usually looks at all that information. Now all you can say is we spent one hundred and forty eight thousand dollars on material. Unless you want to dig through a box for the invoice to that. So, Susan, approximately how many books do you purchase a year, roughly? Between twenty and twenty-five thousand uh, items are purchased and okay. entered into the catalog. So, if but um, uh, just because we enter into the catalog doesn't mean that we don't have multiple copies. Sure. So I understand. So, so the number naturally would be higher. Sure. So if we had that detailed out all those twenty to twenty-five thousand items on, on, on a big stack of paper, I don't see how if we go to the next budget year we as trustees could possibly wade through all those items and then make some sort of decision that yeah, oh yeah this yeah, yeah, particular yeah. book you know we shouldn't purchase it this year could you purchase it next year carolyn i my what opinion, can we use see. now to determine that greg has 20 copies of this book or 10 copies of another book where is this information stored yeah, well, Obviously. The catalog indicates every book that we whatever we purchased last year, so somewhere this information is stored. Yeah, yeah. right. Well, and you can and well, that's what a librarian is for. Right. And this is her job. There's but yeah, I got no it. No reason. But there's no cross reference between that she and She has a cross reference. Back. This is her wisdom that can trace every single item that she has purchased. That the library has purchased can but be we're approving the budget. And right. we need a little so we are right. 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 okay. okay. going through the treasury right. That's all we're doing right now. Right. 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 And I'm going to ask uh, for a show of hands. Uh, are there any of the board members, aside from Carolyn, who's on the phone, and I know what her position is, do any of the other board members want a check detail and account distribution to list every book and AV? That's the material that's purchased. It's not necessarily right. what needs right. to be listed. I do not I see any uh, hands uh, raised for that, so we need to move on. Okay. All right. Uh, may I have a motion? I'm going to moving to the next item on the agenda. All right. I have a question about operating expenses. The um, Illinois Library Association. I'm on page 23. What is your question? Um, I, I noticed that it says 10 registrations, 10 registrations, but the amounts are different. So is each line for 10 people who attended, and it just costs different amounts of money for... What page are you on? Illinois uh, 23, right here where it says Illinois Library Association. Right, Carolyn? Illinois Library yes. Association? Yes. So I'm just trying to figure out, like for $600, it says 10 registrations, but then the next line says $300, 10 registrations. So were there 10, 20, 30, 40 people who attended this, and that was the total cost? 
Uh, no, I think there, that probably is an error that it says 10 registrations. That should not have carried through on all four of those lines. So you have caught an error. Okay. I'm kind of thought so, but I just wanted to understand this. And then, is there something true in like a membership in the middle? Is this part of this reaching forward conference? Reaching forward with the conference. The money went to the uh, uh, Illinois Library Association. It was $150 a piece. There also is, though, somebody's membership to ILA that comes out of the subscriptions and dues line, and that is on a sliding scale, depending on how much money you earn. So those numbers will be different. Okay, and so that was for this conference, or it just no. happened to be on that, is, that line? It just happened to be in the same area. Okay, okay, thank you. All right, then, as I go through this, um, okay. um, on page 27, 27, at the top, it's for the Management Association, which I know we belong to, and I thought we paid a yearly fee. But this looks like it's a HR round table series. Was this something specific that we paid for, or is this what you call our yearly dues to them? The top line. Yeah. The top line on 27. Uh, so yeah, we do uh, we do belong to the management association, and we do pay dues. Um, and what that allows us to do is a number of things, including signing up for programs. One program that we sign up for is the HR uh, roundtable. Uh, which consists of a meeting a month for the uh, for the upcoming year, uh, and uh, that's what that check is uh, is for. We go to a meeting uh, where all participating library uh, libraries who sign up for it uh, share ideas and discuss uh, employment issues and things of that nature, policy issues. All right. Yeah, that's what I thought. So, is like, so is the amount of the check fifteen fifty or is it two fifty? I'm trying to, I, I am I look, what am I looking at here? Check number, and then it says amount, 1,500. Yeah. And then the, I, the amount, it says further down, it says 250. I see what you're talking about. So the way that this, um, the way that this report works is um, just for the sake of discussion, skip on down on the same page to Midwest Tape. On the, on the left of the uh, name Midwest Tape is 11,334.72. Okay, and you see that each time. That's how much the check was written for in total right. one time. Okay, if you see all the check numbers are the same. If you look at the column after the name Midwest Tape, you see a number of items. Which uh, total that? Which total that. The same for a management association. There's $1,300 to the management association on the bottom of page 26. Page you like, Carolyn? Carolyn, I'll help you say it. Yeah. 
But in moving forward with these questions, it would help if you would say Under G, first. Uh, the letter B would be the next page. Thank you. Um, my concern is, here we repeat April receipts, April receipts, and it's kind of hard to figure out what that means. Um, I know Visa paid the bill, but we don't know what vendor these, these April receipts were for. Carolyn, Carolyn, yeah, we had this discussion a number of times, and I'm sure you remember that our Visa bill pays for a lot of different uh, bills, and that the box of receipts is all available to all the trustees that we can go through and we can look at uh, what is on that uh, any of those visa bills for every month. So I'm yeah, sure I'll be you honest with you, that's a wonderful way to dig through a box. Right. But well, I'm sure you remember that, Carolyn. 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 I'm talking. Carolyn. Carolyn. I'm talking now. I'm sure you remember we've had this discussion a couple of times. Um, no, I don't. Really? You don't remember that we've talked about this? That's um, I do recall that, too. So, yeah, I most everybody yeah. else remembers that. So, anyway, um, so yeah. Carolyn, yeah. Carolyn, I'm still talking, Carolyn. Thank you. All right, so um, does anybody here have an issue that it's listed like that? But I think uh, we should probably shouldn't because we've all discussed this. I think we've gone over this already. All right. Do you have any other issues there, Carolyn? So then, so then the question to Greg and, and Susan is, it's impossible for any description for any expenses on the visa bill. We'll just call you know, them. We just we talked about that. Yeah. We just talked about that, and we talked about it already. We need to move on. Do you oh, have any other specific sure I know it correctly. Okay. I don't want to be accused of saying something incorrect here. Okay, great. Okay. All right. Anybody else have any questions? Okay, then I need one last question. Um, yeah. I noticed we have um, mileage reimbursement uh, way at the bottom. Susie Wolf went to the Illinois State Library in Springfield. Carolyn, 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 would you please state what page you're on before she's you start talking? She's on 29. That, hey, I please, know, I, I need Carolyn to say because she's the one who's talking. I don't understand why this is so hard for you, Carolyn. Say what page you're on, one line item, so we can all get to she it and all get it. Um, could you calm down? If you would... Do what I'm asking, then I would calm down, but you make me crazy. Go ahead. State the page. Okay, I guess this should be directed to Susan. Susan, I was just wondering, was she a speaker there um, at the Illinois State Library? In no, she, she actually, um, in this case, applied for a program for developing leadership, and she was accepted to the program, and, she, oh. and so she drove down there rather than... Flying or something. Oh, I knew it had to be something big, so I just wanted to know. Well, that's, that's wonderful. Congratulations to her. Okay, well, thank you. That was my last question. Okay, great. Let me remind, remind board members that if they have any specific questions, they can always call Greg or Susan during the week leading up to the board meeting and ask those questions. So we'll move on to the next item. I will now entertain a motion to approve the payment of bills for operating expenses of $220,337.66. Motion. Payroll, payroll expenses of $274,247.35. And special reserve expenses of $19,180 for a total monthly expense of $513,765.01. Do I have such a motion? Motion. Do I have a second? Second. All right. I think we've already discussed these. May I have a roll call? Uh, Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Uh, no. Dennis? No. Diane? Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Tim. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the director's report, which we've had in our packet. We've had an opportunity to look through and review. Uh, I just wanted to comment on a nice photo of some of the board members who went to the Night of the Roses. I myself was not able to attend. I appreciate those that did go and represent the library at that event. Um, is there um, any, if, do we have a brief update um, from the director also on the strategic plan? I do. And right. is that, that's separate from what we have in our Packet, but it's yeah. at our place. Is that correct? Uh, no, I actually just was going to deliver that orally. Oh, okay, because fine. Most of it just comes down to. All right, I've the, got a paper here. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, the, you don't have it in front of you, so I'm just going to read very okay. briefly. The main thing that we had planned to work on in this quarter was the uh, migration to the new computer system, getting everybody trained on that. So that is, you know, took far and away most of the time. 
Um, the other things that we have been working on is we are still working on trying to uh, improve the navigation through the building since we have heard from people that our building is confusing. And so we are looking at some of the interior signage and trying to decide whether we want to label floors or color code our floors or if we want to color code collections or what we could do to help people find their way through the building a little bit better. Um, so we're still working on that. Um, we are working with the, uh, I am on the Niles Public Arts and Culture Advisory Council and they are, have decided they want to put together an arts guild and, um, and they have suggested that it be housed here and I have agreed to that. And, uh, and Victoria Luz, who is the person who um, is in charge of the gallery out here, uh, she is going to be the contact for the Niles Arts Guild. All right, cool. That's kind of fun. What, would you, what is an arts guild and what, what do you mean? I, by arts well, guild? you know, the, you, I think you attended the artists' gathering, and the art guild really is just the opportunity for artists to get together and discuss what they want to do, what kind of, you know, what they can do collaboratively. Um, this is really just meeting space for us and a little bit of Victoria's time. We would not be funding the guild, we just would be, uh, you know, allowing them to use our space. Very nice. Yes. Supporting the arts community, I think is important. Um, we also, in, under community engagement, are going to be doing a summer program out at Deep Park in Golf Main Park District. And we're going to be there the day that they have their grand opening of the, of the park. They're having a ribbon cutting. So that's exciting. Which park? Uh, D. D Park was just renovated, so we're going to be doing that, and that that's basically it. Um, I could go into more detail, but that's pretty much what we have worked on in the third quarter. All right, um, so we have the statistics in our packet. Yeah, I did want to review a couple documents I put in front of you that I had uh, promised previously, so if you could take a quick look at the large document, um, the legal paper, um, I had promised to give you the uh, list of our databases and the usage of the databases. Pardon me? We, no, we had it delivered to her. Yeah, they ran it out to her at the last minute. Um, so you can see that, certainly, um, you can see that on the left are the names of all the databases. Carolyn had asked about Niche Academy, that is one of them. You can see um, that there is a cost for each one. And then uh, at the far right, it gives you a cost per use of each one. And so each month, the person, Kathleen, in, data, in digital services, uh, gets the numbers from the different vendors of how many uses each product got. And for an example of how they then look at this information, if you drop down to Gale National Geographic, which is the database that went with you know, the National Geographic, which you would think would be wonderful and something that everybody would use, but you can see as you go along the line, People wow. simply did not use it, and they didn't use it for a couple of years, and so we finally pulled the plug on it. Um, so we will no longer be getting that, and then we can also... Use it next <laughs> that's, that's always how it goes. And then the next one below it is Gale Legal Forms. That one has just been added. So it has obviously a very high uh, per, per use cost because we just had it. So. It, as it gets used more and more, the cost per use goes down. So that staff analyzes this when they're making decisions. I'm guessing that, but I'm guessing use means each time a person logs in, and it doesn't keep track of how many hours a person might be You know, using each it vendor or... does it differently. It's not actually as nice apples to apples as we would like, and we continuously work with them too, but they, they have their own ways. So I can't honestly tell you that they're all being calibrated the same. They're probably not. But it gives us an idea, and it gives us an idea over time for each one, and, and you know, gives us an idea of how much it costs. You, so that's how you're getting that use cost per use per the vendor. Per no, the vendor? but we get the total number of people using it, oh, and we you know, calculate the cost gotcha. ourselves. Okay. So, like Hoopla, for instance, Hoopla is is actually one of the few ones that is paid per use. That when somebody uses it, our account gets a certain amount of money that comes out. So it's more of a streaming service. So for Hoopla, so, I'm sorry, go ahead. I, I, yeah, go ahead. I'm just trying to figure out how this works with Hoopla, because yeah, yeah. I use Hoopla sometimes. Yeah. And sometimes I go on and I'm searching, is library charged for that? Oh no. Sometimes I go on check something out. and I oh. do check something out and, and we're then charged, the charged. Watch, how much? I don't have that at my fingertips, I used oh. to know, but okay. I can't. Okay. Library is charged for use. Yes, on Hoopla, it's a streaming service and that's what, how that one works. Um, most of the others are you pay up front with Hoopla, you sort of put money in the bank and it gets pulled out of the bank. 
Okay, so that twenty five thousand is like your bank? Yes. Okay. All right, got it. Yeah. So once that amount it, it hits or exceeds, do they uh, yeah. are we done? With we the would service? be done or we would add more money to it okay. depending on you know, we we um limit the number of times a single person can use it. Sure. And it is of course only limited to Niles card holders. Sure. Um so yeah, it's really it's actually it's the trend now is streaming rather than yeah. physical objects. So that is what we have to work with. And it's working pretty well. Canopy is, I think, mm -hmm. a similar model. Isn't it, is it, I can't remember, is it, isn't it possible to download a copy from Pupil or is that just from one of the other services? You do download it, but temporarily, and it disappears after a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. Right, or so you're not things. necessarily streaming it as you're reading it. it yeah, you can, but, but some people, it's your kind of your choice. Okay. And it's different for the different things on there, too. There's music and movies and... TV shows and things like that. Is that twenty five thousand dollars a year, or is that's just that is the we so far we we have put twenty five thousand dollars into Hoopla this year, and and it doesn't expire. It doesn't expire. No, it keeps rolling over. Yeah. So that's one plus. Yeah. Yeah, we it did introduce this to the board when we decided to get it because it was a different model for service. Mm -hmm. So the board was showing us at the time. Mm -hmm. Do you know it's overdrive on here somehow? I, yeah. I, hate, to, I hate to see if overdrive oh, <laughs> over is getting charged every time. No, it's not. Oh. You don't get charged every time. So no, overdrive, overdrive is, is it's in the it's online different. database. <laughs> on the online okay. line, it's not in the database. It's it's online. Online. So that's one of the things that I had promised you, so you guys can, and you're welcome to ask more questions later. No, and then the next thing you would also ask for an updated uh, org chart, so that is here. It changed multiple times just in the time that I was putting it together, and Greg did a lot of formatting. So, but anyway, it does give you an idea. It gives you an idea of the sort of the chain of command. All of everybody that reports to me in my chain is in outlined in green, and everybody that reports to Greg is outlined in gold. And so this is this gives you the names, mm -hmm. and right. and it does also also show you show you where we have some vacant positions. So those are the things that I had promised you. So I can pass them out. Thank, Thank you. you. Great right. report. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very much. Sure. Okay. Can I ask you one question, Patrick, on the um the uh, um the new um oh God um oh, okay so we transferred over from the old um. I have a question. I got a call from a patron who said that um, she was charged for her books. Um, they weren't automatically renewed. Okay. And yes. I thought maybe we were in, in our process of switching over and she just kind of got caught up in that. That's exactly right. We have told people we will waive any fines like that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Could you, no, I, I'll find out. I'll yeah. find so out. please right. do Thank encourage you so much. Much to, to All right. get that waived. We're very happy to do that. We don't want to Okay. Waived. Thank you. All right. So, uh, communications. Um, I'm sorry. Yes. Is that the for the? That's my the, director. Um, yes. And I would encourage anybody who's got an issue with any of the trustees to uh, encourage them to come to the board meetings. If they, you know, if anybody, if anybody comes up to you or puts a message in that no. they've got an issue with us or oh. what we're doing or what we're doing or whatever, I was not going to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't want to embarrass you. <laughs> That's but, okay, I, I saw it in there. But encourage them to come to the board meeting and express their opinions <laughs> right. about um, what they should I mean, yeah. I guess it's a right sense yeah. because yeah, sure. you, yeah. as a director, can't really, can't really no, I'll, I'll say anything. Yes. Yes. Right. I, mean, I, I did not want to put words in your mouth. So but, and you yes. can't do that. Or, and I would, I would recommend that any of the staff say, you know, yeah. please come, you're welcome to come yeah, to the board meeting. Yeah. 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 But this is written on a piece of paper stuff. So I have no idea. I don't mind. All right. So uh, other than the communications, the suggestions that we have in our packet and um, have had an opportunity to look at it already, are there any other communications? No. All right. What about labor reports from the Friends of the Library and Legislative or Rails? Anything? Uh, Friends of the Library, I talked to Kristen Nuziak last week and he decided to move the day of the friends meetings from Mondays to the third Thursday of the month. He thinks that will work better for their schedule, so we have booked the rooms for him for the next year. Oh. So that's what I know about friends. So they no did have a meeting this last Monday. They were still scheduled to meet. Okay. And then okay. Okay. by the way, about friends, the meeting was rescheduled from Monday to tomorrow. But because they couldn't, uh, enough people couldn't make it, they have canceled the meeting. Okay. So will it be on Thursday starting with June? June? 
Okay, Carolyn, is that the second Thursday of the month or, or what Thursday? I wasn't aware that they were changing all of the meetings to Thursdays. I just knew this one was switched. Wow. So whatever Susan was told, I'm sure it's correct. Oh, third Thursday. Okay. Yeah, I do have something for legislative, which is that um, mm -hmm. the United States Senate today voted to reinstate net neutrality. Uh, that's not oh, here it is. Uh, and that it's not it's uh, the final thing. It still would have to go to the House. It still have to be signed by the president. But it's encouraging because that will make a big difference to libraries and how much we have to pay for people to be able to use the internet. And uh, there's, oh, and Rails, Rails is running its election right now, and I have voted on behalf of the library for that. You know, it has a board. But if any of you ever decide that you would like to be on the Rails board, you should let me know, and we can get you nominated. Okay. All right, fine. Um, so, secretary's report is our next item. Um, it's about the public hearing next month. Uh, Diane, would you like to uh, read uh, this in for the record? A notice of public hearing on June 20, 2018, at the hour of 6.55 p.m. at the Niles Main District Library in Woodland, 6960 Open Street, Niles, Illinois, concerning Tentative Ordinance 18-01. A tentative ordinance providing for budget and appropriations of the Niles Main District Library for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2018, ending June 30, 2019, was published in the Journal Topics and News on Wednesday, May 16, 2018. Copies of the aforementioned tentative ordinance will be available in the Administrative Office of the Niles Main District Library after May 16, from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., Monday through Friday. All right, thank you very much for uh, reading that into the record. We'll go on now to new business. Uh, first item under new business. Uh, do I have a motion to approve the recommended purchase of 12 laptop computers, peripherals, and a charging storage cart from Dell Computers in the amount of $21,689.73? Motion. Second. Okay, all right. Um, any comments or questions on this purchase? Our, I just note our new packet has these all the supporting materials in it. Mm -hmm. I think maybe we had this part already, but in any event, we have all the supporting materials for the bids on this, I think. Mm -hmm. Are there any questions on what's being purchased here? Actually, the, this is purchased through our uh, the contract that we have. NASPO. Yeah, I'm sorry, this is the, the NASPO purchase. Isn't it? Yeah. Do we have a rough idea what this would cost if we went out? Or in the last, uh, in the last paragraph, on page fifty-three, um, you know, basically the rack rate on, on that equipment is just shy of forty thousand dollars. Okay, um, and you can take that with a grain of salt because they're always running specials and sure. stuff mm -hmm. like that. But this is a nationwide contract. It's it's uh, done through this purchasing organization. So, Dennis, I'm not sure if you had an opportunity to hear about this before, but this is essentially an organization we belong to, and they put out bids for us, and they get nationwide prices for us. Yeah, not specifically for us. No, but, but go, I mean for the product. For the products. And, and they negotiate a price right. for Dell, you know, across the board, and any member can then um, employ the terms of that contract purchase from, uh, from Dell. As an example, uh, there's other providers in there as well. Okay. Are there any um, questions or comments on this motion, which is on the table? Yes. Go ahead. So uh, when we when we looked at you know them getting these prices for us, did you also look at like CBWG and then the other places where they? Well, of course. But we're not we're not necessarily required to because of the of the negotiation process that goes on with the Dell through this organization. Oh, okay. So they're kind of a guarantee to give you the lowest? Uh, pretty much, yeah. Pretty much? Okay. All right. So, um, Susan, what are these computers going to be used for? I mean, they're coming out of per capita money, is that right? They are. And they um, are going to be used for, 10 of them are going to be 
uh, kept out of digital services for the people that would like to take a laptop and go work with it in a study room rather than be sitting out in the, on the main floor with everybody. It, it, it's too chaotic of an environment for some people. Um, and it is, is a, so they, it is strictly for in-house use. Nobody can check these out of the library. Um, and then the, there's one more where uh, Neil O'Shea is a test proctor. He works with um, Brigham Young and some other online universities where people that are taking online courses can come and take the tests here. And you know he doesn't like stand over them, but he kind of puts them, sees them, and kind of monitors them. And he has a special computer for them to be taking the tests on. Oh. Um, so that's what that one's for. And then the last one is for one of the, the newest supervisor. Everybody else got uh, laptops like eight or nine years ago, which are really kind of old bricks at this point. But um, but they still function, and so we're still using them, but this person never got one, so she is getting one in this batch as well. Do we have some kind of work from home? Security. Susan, can I ask a question? Uh, Karen, um, just, just do one we second. currently have last Carolyn, Carolyn um, you know, I'll recognize you when you want to ask a question, because sometimes someone else is already speaking, so just one second, okay? Um, okay, please let me know when I will, speak. I will, I will. Um, I was in the process of asking you, what if any security do we have to make sure these laptops that people can use in the study rooms do not walk out of the library? Thank you for asking that. I'm going to turn to Greg because yeah. I don't know exactly okay. what they have in mind. Well, we do have a card, and we have a, a card, card. A card, card, you know, like a library card that does have a service agreement attached to it, which basically says that they're obligated to pay for uh, the damage of anything that they take out of, out of the library. So having that card uh, basically ensures us that we'll get get back, otherwise it's like an open check, mm -hmm. um, that you know, if they walk out of the library with it, we'll make sure that, you know, that, uh, okay. that they're put into collection and so forth that they don't return the act. So you can't just pick it up and use it, you have to swipe the card. That's right. It. That's right. It's like, it's like taking out a book or taking, you know, uh, accessing a database or, or whatever. We also have uh, other items in um, uh, the Creative Studio. We have GoPro cameras and uh, digital cameras, uh, video cameras, and uh, things of that nature that are basically operating the same way. And we haven't uh, really experienced any loss whatsoever. Okay. All right. Um, Carolyn, did you want to ask a question now? Oh, uh, yeah. Do we currently have laptops for patrons on our initial purchase? Initial purchase. I, I think there are a couple for Creative Studio, and that's all. Okay. And we would like to purchase these and give them to patrons rather than... Would they check them out? Supervisors who are... who have... Who Laptops are older. I mean, oh no no, we're not giving them to the supervisors. These are for people to check out in the building. Right. I know. I'm just thinking since they're brand new, does it matter for people when they're in the building? It's an older laptop or a newer one. Um. Well, I I don't think that we could get the old, really old computers up and running very well for those people. I don't know that. Okay. Uh, I thought maybe the, the supervisors who have old ones, maybe we would give them the new ones. I don't know how old you said they were. So, but if you don't think giving that to the patrons would be a good idea, I was just thinking rather than get brand new laptops to patrons, if our supervisors need them, I could see us switching them. But, okay, well, that answers that question. And then as far as the cart goes, the cart isn't really a security measure. It's just a charging mechanism, right? So oh, it, it does lack. Oh, it does? Okay, I agree. Um, all right, well, thank you. That's all I have. Okay, anyone else have a question about this purchase? If not, then uh, may I have a roll call? Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Dennis? Yes. Diane? Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Jen? Yes. Okay, thank you. And just a final uh, question. This amount is coming out of our per capita grant, right? That's correct. That 44000 that we got for yes. the past year. That's right. Okay, from the state of Illinois. Yes. Right. Okay. So, yeah, we have been planning on purchasing them next year, and since we got that money, we decided to just go ahead and push that purchase up. Great. Uh, next, we have three motions that I'll have to do with the RFPs. We saw last March. First, I need a motion to award Continental Construction Company a contract in the amount of 106000 for exterior caulking of the library building. Do you have a motion to get this on the floor? 
Uh, Patty? Mm -hmm. Second? Second. Oh, okay. Uh, Greg, uh, can you review for us what the process were for these three bids? Uh, certainly. Uh, we, post, we posted a notice uh, or a solicitation for bids on uh, it was March 22nd. Uh, we asked uh, all companies that were interested to uh, let us know if they'd like to uh, sum, uh, submit a, a bid, um, after which they were given a bid package. Uh, the nature of the bid package was to make sure that they were paying um, a prevailing wage primarily and uh, that they weren't discriminating in any way. Um, uh, each company uh, came to the library and walked the property with, uh, with Dave Dabrowski, our management supervisor, to make sure that they all had the same scope and they all had the same uh, idea of what, the, what it would take to, uh, to do the work. Uh, we received, as a result, we received four bids. Um, the bids came from a number of sources. There are, I, I didn't know this, uh, but there are companies out there that look at all of the newspapers. And when they see a bid that is, would be interesting to their constituents, they pick it up and list it. And, um, and then uh, members of that organization uh, look at that list and they decide whether or not they, uh, they can handle the job and therefore want to submit a bid. Um, so we had four people show up. Uh, the lowest bidder on the project was Master Project. Um, they bid uh, $78,800. Uh, and during our due diligence, we found that they were drastically short in terms of the scope of the, uh, of the overall uh, project, and their bid was no longer viable. They submitted to us um, a letter withdrawing from the process, and once they did that, uh, we moved on to the next lowest bidder, which was uh, Continental Construction. So, uh, during the due diligence, diligence process uh, that uh, uh, Dave and I performed, uh, we were assured uh, through uh, referrals and, uh, and past jobs that they had done uh, that uh, Continental Construction was a, a viable company, did fine work, and was capable of doing their job. And on that basis, we uh, would like to award Continental the uh, contract for $106,000. Okay, any questions on the exterior parking item? Right, hearing none, I'd like to have a roll call to award, uh, let's see, to award the contract to Continental Construction, which is the pending motion. Uh, yes. Carolyn? Uh, yes. Dennis? Yes. Diane? Yes. Yes. Linda? Yes. Tim? Yes. Okay. All right. Next, I need a motion to award Nedro Decorating Incorporated contract in the amount of $44,200 for exterior painting of the library building. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Okay. Patty and Linda. Uh, this memo is found on page 65 of the mirror materials. Pretty much tells us what we need to know. Uh, my values always go to the lowest bid, the P and T, but I understand they, their bid did not include a significant portion of the scope, and they withdrew their bid, too. Uh, so, that's correct. So uh, you're recommending that we go with the next lowest bidder, Nedro Decorating. Correct? Yes. That's okay. Correct. All right. Any questions on this item? You know what? I'm looking at the other one. I saw there was a big difference in, in price. Here, again, the one that you're suggesting is quite a bit lower than the next higher one. Yes. What was the reason for that? Do you, or was there a reason for that? Uh, you know, I, you know I, I couldn't say specifically. Uh, maybe it's markup. Um, okay. You know, but you know, the uh, yes. simple fact of the matter is that uh, you know we looked at that a uh, bit very closely uh, because it's uh, too good to be true. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, in that process, one of the things we did find was a question possibly with the material that they're using. And um, we intend to investigate that further, but you know, if in fact they were way off on the material, we may need a change order to $5,000, which we would uh, bring to the board. But even at this bid plus $5,000, it's still half as much as the next, as the next highest bid. 
we went through the same rigorous pro uh, process. Um, we um, uh, we got references and test jobs from them, investigated those. Uh, they were interior and exterior painting jobs. Uh, said that they did a fine job. They did uh, all sorts of you know ups and extras and on the jobs that were clean, uh, which is very important to us mm -hmm. because you know of cars in the parking lot, people around the building. Um, you know, during uh, uh, during the summer, during the painting season, mm -hmm. and we felt uh, after we did our uh, due diligence, we felt confident in awarding the contract to a Thank you. Okay. Uh, uh, no, I'm sorry. I have a okay, yes. um, so I see, and the other three that were so much higher, they did list uh, amounts per each phase, uh, whereas. Um, <clears throat> Nedro, is it? I'm sorry. Yes, Nedro did not. Right. Are we confident that Nedro understands that there are these yes. six phases? Yes. Yeah. As a matter of fact, they confirmed to us in writing. Okay. Um, you know that um, that they understood the different phases of the project, okay. and, and they, you know, most importantly, the um, uh, the painting would start with a uh, primer coat uh, followed by two finished coats, okay. which is very important to us. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, you know, actually, if you look at, you know, I mean, just comparatively, if you look at the, the different allocations, they're really kind of arbitrary. I mean, there doesn't yeah. seem to be a rhyme or reason. Sure. So, you know, when looking at it, you know, it, it didn't give us um, a lot of confidence to disqualify anybody from that, you know, fin you know, filling that part of it out. And um, who is choosing the colors? Um, we're going to work with our architect um, and uh, submit the uh, chips to uh, our director. Uh -huh. But if the board wants, no, I was yeah. just wondering. Just wondering. I mean, could have a you know. Yellow color, you know, sure, yes. sure, sure yes. troops. Because I love doing <laughs> that at home so much. Yeah. Okay, that's I, my question. Are there any good. serious questions? Sorry. Well, color, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so right. Thank you for the um neighbor roll call now. Here, Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Or, uh, Dennis, I'm sorry. Uh, Dennis? Yes. Diane? Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Going to the next item, we need a motion to award C. Atatelli, Heaven Piping Contractors Incorporated, a contract in the amount of $147,160 for the 250-ton filler replacement on the library building. Uh, this mill is on page 71. We heard a bit about the chiller in the past and how far in advance you have to order it. Uh, so, um, first of all, do, do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Okay, so that's Diane and Patty. Um, are there any uh, questions or comments about the chiller replacement on the library building? All right, uh, hearing none. Uh, Made a roll call. I'm sorry. You know, I had a question uh, whenever I can ask it. All right, Dennis, Dennis uh, got in a second before you did. So I mean, what That's fine. I'll wait. Just let me know. Thanks. Okay. Yeah, again, I was, I was just looking at the cost again. Yeah. Just under 300000 to just about that. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm assuming that everybody knows what they're doing. They did their due diligence. They did their checks. It's just, it's just astounding. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I agree with that. Absolutely, I agree with that. Yes. But you know, what should give you some uh, confidence is that there's a, a pretty good grouping around, you know, pretty close to one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, moreover, um, Mr. Assatelli is the uh, contractor who won the uh, business to put the new uh, boilers in the building uh -huh. during the uh, during the renovation. That was a very significant portion of the project, I think running uh, close to 20% of the overall spend on that. And um, uh, uh, we also made sure that we were all getting, we were getting all the same model. Uh, if you look under ch chiller model, it's exactly the same for the, you know, okay. for the top three. As a matter of fact, that goes down further. But you know, we really, um, we really bored in on the 
first on the first three, um, you know, because as information was flowing, we wanted to make sure that we had alternatives moving at the same time. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I uh, I, I take your point, um, but I, I don't know how to explain it. I don't know how to explain the 278 to 200,000 uh, bids on the bottom. And, and oh, I'm sorry, Carolyn, you were next. Are you referring to a question about? Um, I I think I read the description, and I was just wondering: did we have any specifications to go along with this solar installation, or? Were you trying to just replace what you had, and that's what they used to determine what you want? Well, um, so the way that uh, the way that we did this is that we started with um, uh, the way that we did this is that we started um, with a an idea of what it would take. You know, we had somebody give us some information informally. And, and then we use that to inform the uh, development of the scope. So uh, just like in the other two cases, you know, we had put something in the paper on the same day, March 22nd, and opened the bids on April 30th. Um, each, uh, each contractor, uh, some of them are known to us, such as Acetelli, Oak Brook Mechanical, F.B. Moran. Uh, okay. They've either done some work for us or they've... Um, uh, been trying to do some work for us, and what we did was um, we uh, invited them all out. They walked them through, and it, you know very quickly um, in in this type of uh, job, you start looking at two brands. The first is Carrier, and the second is Train. Yeah. Um, all of the other brands, uh, they're not even secondary; they're like tertiary uh, right. level. And we wanted to make sure that we had uh, dependable, uh, mature uh, technology that was going to last for another 20 years or so. Um, the current chiller that's on the roof, um, this is its uh, 20th birthday, approximately. And um, you know, and we could we can milk more out of it if we had to, um, but you know, you have to include repair costs in your operating base. And we thought that we were much better off uh, moving to a newer model at this point sure. and, and reaping the benefit. One of the things I want to alert the board to is that Commonwealth Edison um, is going to uh, is likely to give us a credit uh, somewhere between eight and eleven thousand uh, dollars, which is you know at, at the current run rate. Um, somewhere between uh, one and two months of uh, electricity, uh, depending on which month you pick. So, um, you know, the, uh, the, you know, the bid that we're suggesting as uh, uh as part of their uh, offering uh, is going to work with us hand in glove to make sure that we get as much as we possibly can out of their credit. That's cool. Okay. Well, thanks for the details. I just know children are pretty involved in that. Wondering how you know, all the details, but it makes sense. All right, thanks, Greg. All right, Tim, you had a question? Uh, no, I. No? Okay, I figured it out. All right, does anyone else have a question on this item then? Just one really quick question. Yes, go ahead. Um, do all the other uh, bids have the same, um, uh, what is it called? The same uh, uh, piece of equipment? No. Um, <coughs> um, uh, some of them vary, some of them, well, uh, okay, so like the top three, you see right there, it's, mm -hmm. it's a one year parts and labor, right. and then yours two to five. Okay. Um, I was just wondering if they were all comparable. They, they were, by and large. You know, some of them had add-ons, like Acetelli included year, years two to five um, uh. on an add-on basis, which is, you know, why you see that alternative number. Right, right, I was wondering what that was, right. So that includes three things, a card, which will hook into our system and allow us to control it through the software that, that we're using uh, to control all of the HVAC. It also includes uh, sound dampening, I'm sorry, vibration dampening and sound attenuation. Um, as, um, what, am I, what am I missing here? It was, um, yeah, no, you got me stumped. It was sound dampening, um, oh, it was a warranty. Oh, and, 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 the, and, the, and the warranty from 2 to 5, which is what we started talking about. Yeah. 
So, um, you know, they had bid originally 136, and they said, hey, you know, if you want these add-ons, that's great. And to level everything, you know, we took the add-ons and we put them in and made sure that we were comfortable with the price. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions on this item? Right. Roll call, please. Uh, Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Dennis? Yep. Diane? Yes. Patty? Yes. Mm -hmm. Linda? Yes. Tim? Yes. Okay, thank you. Let's go on to the next item of your business, and this would be E. So this is the month when we need to approve insurance purchases for the upcoming fiscal year. Uh, first, do I hear a motion to approve the recommended purchase of liability and workers' comp insurance in the total amount of $61,671 for the 2018-2019 fiscal year? Do I have such a motion? Motion. Daddy? Second. Linda. Okay, uh, page 87, we have the breakout of types of insurance we are purchasing through Cook and Coker. 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 I see that we're adding two new kinds of insurance. And um, why is that? What, what, what is going on here? So, um, you know, what we do every year is, is uh, we, we look at uh, where we might have some exposure where that exposure might be able to cover, be covered off economically by, uh, you know, uh, buying uh, an additional policy uh, with our insurance carrier. This year, one of the, uh, one of the products that they offered us was the uh, $1 million. Um, Craig, could I ask you to just stop for a second? Um, Carolyn, Carolyn, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. We're, we're hearing some squeaking noises uh, coming out of the phone. Is, is your phone on mute when you're not speaking? I'm fine. Can, can you put your phone on mute when you're not speaking? The phone is making some squeaking noises. Not sure why. Oh, okay. It's probably because it's at the other end of the table, and maybe I'm moving papers. All right, no problem. Okay, thanks. Greg, will you resume what you were no, saying? Certainly, certainly. So um, uh, the first type of insurance that, uh, that we talked about in addition to our uh, usual ongoing package was abuse and molestation charges. Uh, so should, and we have a lot of children in the library, uh, should they not even be abused or molested but make an accusation, um, we want it to be covered. I mean, the, mm -hmm. you know, more and more in the press with the Me Too movement and and other types of uh, cases that you read about, um, you know, uh, uh, the public sensitivity, sensitivity is being is being raised. So we felt that, that for two hundred and fifty dollars a year for that particular policy, uh, we felt that that was uh, an extraordinarily good buy uh, on that. So where, I'm sorry, where does that fit into the chart that I'm looking at here? Um, it's an under liability package, and it's to Utica Insurance. Utica liability, so it's within that thirty thousand there. Is that what you're saying? Or it's yes. Under? Yes. Okay. That's, a, that's exactly what I'm saying. All right. And what's the difference between what does it mean, Utica General Fund? What is what is uh, that? That's that's the actual fund that it's being charged. So we have the general fund, which is the day-to-day -day oh. operations of the library, and then we have a, a a specific liability fund for liability insurance. It's one of our special revenue funds. Okay. I guess why is it charged to the general fund at all? I guess I'm not well, that's that. all, that's the automotive package. Uh, so that's the insurance for the van. Oh, I see. Just a collision. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I see. Okay, all right. So it's collision liability. liability and so forth. All right. So, and what's under travelers' liability? Um, <laughs> travelers' liability is uh, travelers' insurance is uh, what's called the uh, the crime policy, I believe, and. What that, what that basically does is it covers, first of all, it covers the board uh, from, uh, you know, it's like directors Mr. and Director officers. Mr. Director and officer insurance yeah. within this category? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, then it also covers uh, people handling money and uh, things of that nature. Okay. All right. And then, of course, we have the workers' comp fund. Yeah. All right. Uh, we did change from Hartford, uh, the Hartford to Hanover. Um, we've had some uh, incidents in the building that have resulted in claims. Uh, last year, the, uh, the Hartford paid well in 
excess of what the uh, actual uh, premiums were, and they were looking to recoup that. So they went up, I think it was eleven or twelve thousand dollars if if, uh, if I remember correctly. And uh, we, you know, we, we take our packages to the to the market and we look for the best, you know, for the best price of, you know, with a credible insurance insurance company. And the Hanover, which is you know rated exactly the same as, as the Hartford, um, wanted to be a little bit more aggressive. So they actually wrote the workers' compensation. Uh, policy at a lower rate than what we had been paying the Hartford the previous year. So, so that was a that was a real that was a real win for us. I, I I think it would be absolutely if we could get the, the lower rate from them. But I do have a concern. Uh, we had an uh, unusual number of workers' comp claims this past year. Would you say? Yes. And is there is there anything that we can do looking at our physical plan to reduce the number of workers' comp claims? Um, so, you know, one of the claims, somebody slipped in the back hall and, uh, uh, and fell and had an injury. Uh, what we did do is extend the runners down the hall so that instead of tile uh, they're walking on, they're walking on microfiber uh, runners which wick the uh, moisture in the, in the rainy days off your shoes. And by the time you walk to the uh, end of the runner, you're in uh, your dry surface and you have dry shoes. So that you know, that certainly went a long way to help me eliminate that. Um, uh, one of uh, one of our employees uh, caught a finger in a door. I don't know exactly how, how that happened, but I mean, other than saying, please don't do that again, which I'm sure they have an incentive to because of the pain involved. Um, you know, they uh, this person you know had had an injury. Uh, it was kind of a freak accident. Uh, and then we had another employee. Um, who was uh, uh, rushing a little bit and tangled up her feet, fell, and, uh, and hurt her foot. Um, I mean, in those cases, you try to stress, you know, safety over, you know, over speed. Um, and uh, I, I'm not exactly sure what else to do for those types of things. You know, but you know, the, one, the, the slip and fall in the back hall was, you know, was probably one of the nice part of our biggest things. Okay. Any other questions on this item? Okay. All right. Um, can I have a motion? I mean, may I have a roll call? Motion. Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Dennis? Yes. Diane? Yes. Carrie? Yes. Linda? Yes. Tim? Yes. Okay. We also need to approve. Auditing firms to become mayor. Do I hear a motion to approve the appointment of and payment to McClure and Surratt and Company uh, chartered in the estimated amount of $17,200 to perform the audit of the Niles Main District Library as of before the year ending June 30th, 2018? Do I have such a motion? Motion. Ready? Second. And Diane, second. All right. Uh, any questions or comments about this? Oh, um, yes. You know, as far as as far as hiring the audit, I I thought at some point didn't we talk about delaying this this no, portion? No, no, no. It. We, 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 we discussed it. So, like for next time, we would possibly discuss it. Right? Okay. We did talk about changing to a different yeah. firm, but in order to have done that, we probably would have done that. We needed to do that a couple of meetings ago, right. and at that time, so we're keep the same. Well, yeah, it was my understanding you sort of wanted to yeah. not change. Well, I, I don't care if we don't, you know, whether we change or not. Uh -huh. I mean, that's not the real issue. I just thought with with all the things that were going on, we had a number of these other projects going on. We had the, the budget going on, and there was a talk about well, let's let's get this you know bid out there. And I said, well, gosh, you know, there's with so much going on, maybe we should. And that's fine. We can we can certainly address it in the coming year. Um, and I just want to say that I have nothing bad to say about McClure and Sarah. I think they've done a fine job, but I think it's just sort of good um, fiscal just, policy to occasionally yeah. engage uh, different auditors or consider yeah. different auditors. Yep. So, but we'll do that uh, next year. Okay. So, um, any other questions or comments regarding uh, this item? None. Uh, I have a question. Oh, yes. Yes. Um, Probably to Greg, or I'm not sure who they write this to, but it was 
I just know how she started her letter. Um, we are pleased to confirm our understanding of the services we are to provide Niles Main District Library. Is there something different that she'll be doing this time around as opposed to her audit process in the past? Yeah, well, if you look at, uh, I think it's on page 88, uh, where the motion is. Um, there's a, a new uh, accounting pronouncement uh, that were uh, that affects us. Uh, it's uh, GASB 75, other post retirement benefits, and what that does is it changes the way that that we account for a certain portion of our relationship with IMRF. Uh, so uh, there's a $1,500 add-on, uh, as you see in that paragraph uh, related to that. So Usually when there's a new, um, when there's a change, whether it's a change that the library has created, for example, we were paying higher fees during the construction period because there was a large project around which they had to perform additional audit uh, procedures. And now this year we have this GASB 75, um, which they'll have to perform an audit uh, around the implementation of that particular uh, that particular pronouncement, uh, they charge us extra for that. Uh, the other thing I want to bring to the board's attention is that the engagement letter that they've written is for seventeen thousand two hundred dollars. The budget item is for twenty one thousand two hundred uh, because in the same fund. Um, Related to GASB 75, we are required to have an actuarial study performed on, uh, on this part of our relationship with uh, IMRF. So once that is performed, then that's the, that'll form the basis of, of what they're auditing and the implementation of that particular uh, uh, pronouncement. Okay, can I just ask for one clarification? So there's GASB 75, other post-employment benefits. Are these um, retirement benefits that will be paying out to employees who may have retired already? Uh, possibly. Is yeah. that what this represents? Yeah. Okay. All right, great. Thank you for that. All right. Uh, unless there's any other questions, I was for a call. Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Dennis? Yeah. Diane? Yes. Penny? Yes. Linda? Yes. Tim? Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Let's turn to the next item. Uh, we have two motions concerning health insurance. Uh, first, I need a motion to approve the recommended renewal of the health care insurance plan with Blue Cross Blue Shield beginning on July 1 and ending July 1, 2018 and ending on June 30th. 2019. Uh, do I accept your motion? Motion. Second. Okay. Okay. Um, this is on page 95. Um, are there any changes to the plan from last year? No. Um, what we what we have with Blue Cross Blue Shield is what's what called what is called a grandfather plan, um, such that if we if we make any significant changes to it, then it throws us onto a completely different schedule altogether. Um, that is in terms of the coverages, is it, that correct? Um, yeah, mm -hmm. so if, if you decided to go to a different a materially, well, just any different um, deductible level or a different drug formulary or, you know, things like that, um, then, you know, you're no longer in the grandfather uh, plan pot. And in the non-grandfather uh, plan, you tend to pay higher higher okay. rates from what we've seen. So this has worked out well for us. Okay. And can you also refresh our memories as to what our health insurance costs are for the upcoming year as opposed to the past year? How they compare? Um, yeah, uh, we've gone down. Um, from budget year to budget year, on a budget basis, we've gone down about $50,000. How about from the actual? Uh, from the actual, well, what I what I've prepared here, Okay, because you know, not to stonewall or anything, but actual really doesn't matter. What matters is the number of people that we're going to have enrolled okay. in this upcoming year, which which is different than what we had last year. Okay. Okay. So 
what I did was prepare a chart which said old coverage using current enrolled, new coverage using current enrolled. So I try to make it as much of an apples to apples comparison as I possibly can. Uh, using, using the current enrolled, uh, we see that last year would have cost $512,000. Uh, this year will cost uh, $491,000. Uh, I'm sorry, Greg, are you on page 96 too? Uh, 95, I'm sorry, Joe. Uh, so. You were just busy. Uh, Thank What do you mean by blended heat? Oh, I got you. Thank you. Okay, so Craig, just to pick up, it's the it's you're on page 95. Pay yeah. attention to the first right term, top of the page is 2017-2018 yeah. prices. The bottom part, the renewal, is the 2018-2019 prices. That's correct. Okay, so. all right. So we're 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 looking at those now. Um, and, but, but the important thing is to make them comparable. I'm using uh, the same enrollment numbers for last year and this year. Sure. Okay. So, using that basis of comparison, uh, we see a reduction uh, between the two years of uh, $21,000. Mm -hmm. um, now, to Diane's question, uh, at the bottom of page 95, where it says a blended decrease of 4.3%, what I'm referring to, Diane, is that if you look at each, each uh, level of coverage separately, if you make a comparison between the net cost numbers, um, you're going to come up with a number of different, um, a number of different uh, rate changes. Okay, some will be high and some some will be low. But when you look at it in the aggregate, okay, on a blended basis, using 30 single uh, coverages, seven employee plus spouse coverages, and two employee plus family coverages, we end up with a blended decrease of 4.3%. Answer your question? Because mm -hmm. some of these coverages, you know, one of the coverages actually went down like about 6% or so. Hmm. You know, but it wouldn't be fair to say that it's a 6% mm -hmm. reduction. So. Okay. Um, so again, we're on G right now. We have two items relating to health insurance, but we're on G right now. Does anyone have a, any further questions regarding the health insurance item, which is under new item? G. So, so the actual cost for an employee or employee spouse, could you help me understand that for this year? For the upcoming year? Yeah. For uh, the, the net cost, okay, which is our so, proposed monthly cost less the proposed monthly price tag is $845.34. So you're saying it's post price tag to be paid by the employee. That's what that means, right? Yes. Yeah. So the monthly cost for an employee is going to be nine hundred thirty-nine dollars, but we're not going to pay all of that under the proposed share that right. the employee will pay, number ninety-four dollars. Our net cost is going to be eight hundred forty-five dollars, but you multiply that by what am I looking at? Thirty. The, the 30. number of people mm -hmm. times the times the number net cost. of months. But well, yeah, times the number of months times the monthly net cost, mm -hmm. and that results in the yeah. well, I'm sorry, excuse me. You take you take the number enrolled of thirty mm -hmm. times eight hundred and forty-five, and that results in a total monthly cost of twenty-five thousand three hundred sixty for that tranche of uh, insurance. Uh, if you do the same thing for employee plus, uh, plus spouse, it's right. uh, seven enrolled seven for eleven thousand per month, mm -hmm. and if you do it for you know, plus family, it's uh, two uh, employees for uh, thirty-eight thousand. I'm sorry, thirty-eight hundred dollars a month. When you sum those three numbers, our net cost per month is just shy of forty-one thousand dollars, and okay. then if you multiply that by twelve. Then you get the annual cost. You get mm -hmm. the annual cost. Yeah, okay. I'm just I'm just looking for what gets pulled out of somebody's check. Mm -hmm. That's the proposed price tag, and that's mm -hmm. on a monthly basis. And that's the next motion, actually. Yes. 
but so yeah. so you're getting somebody's pulling nine hundred and thirty nine dollars out of your uh, monthly paycheck or, or twice yeah. a month. That's what I'm looking to understand. That's that's the proposal. This the nine thirty nine thirty four. Yeah. That's what Blue Cross Blue Shield charges the library yeah. for one month of single coverage. Okay. This is the employee. Ninety four dollars. Right. Wow, it's nice. Yeah, well, it's very nice. It's comparable. Yeah. <laughs> Those are all comparable. Do you want to hear unbelievable? All right. Uh, does anyone have any other questions regarding item G? If not, I'll ask for a roll call. I think actually I do have a question. So if 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 I say yes to this. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm desperately trying to find ways to hold down costs. And I know in the business world, because I've never been working in a library or, or some other situations, I know in the business world there's, there's a great deal more paid uh, into health insurance. I know uh, I have some uh, friends and family that uh, are in certain situations where they pay a greatly reduced price uh, on, on health insurance, and so again, I I understand that you you have this grandfathered plan, <coughs> uh, but my concern is is as as we go forward, somewhere you have to make the things balance out for everybody. So, uh, and I'm not saying this is a place to cut. I stood up there before, and I, I just mentioned a number of things because I said, well, gee, we should have to cut somewhere. And uh, so the health uh, space was one of them. And, and like I said, uh, I would love to have, uh, you know, this as my uh, uh, payment uh, for uh, health benefits. I think it's, uh, it's, it's fantastic. But just to be clear, this particular motion is just to renew our policy with Blue Cross Blue Shield. Yeah. The next motion is the percentage that the employee should be paying. Okay. So just to, um, as one of the clear, cover, uh, clarification question, you said we're grandfathered in. Uh, do we have to keep paying the same relatively sh relative share of an employee's insurance in order to be grandfathered into the same coverage, or can that change or not? Price tags are independent. The relative price tags between the district and the employee yeah, that those is are not something that concerns Blue Cross no. Blue Shield when renewing our contracts. No. So really what we're looking at right now is not so much how much the employee is going to pay us, right. but just the total amount we're going to pay Blue Cross Blue Shield. The next motion will address how much the employees will pay us. Okay, yeah, all right. I'll, I'll, I'll save my questions. <laughs> okay. um, I just really want to add, maybe next year, just so it's really... Um, it's kind of transparent for everyone. I know in the past we've done comparisons, mm -hmm. so you can see. I know it's easy to say, oh, we're grandfathered in, let's just take this. We've really looked at this prior and seen if we would have have it without the grandfather, it's so much more expensive, and we've compared it to other companies, and it was for the same policy, so much more expensive. But it would, wouldn't be bad to do maybe next year again, just to compare it has been Probably at least maybe two or three years. Well, we do that every year. Oh, you still do yeah. that every so, anyway? you know, okay. when you go uh, uh, when you go to other insurance companies, yeah, uh, generally they'll pitch you uh, a low, low, low rate, uh, sometimes half of what we're paying, yeah. <laughs> and it's conditional upon underwriting. So what that means is they look at the landscape, they take everybody's uh, because it's yes, a, it's history. it's really uh, it's really a risk mitigation exercise for them. They look at everybody's history, you know, um, I don't know, maybe maybe you're being treated for, you know, a heart or cancer or something like that. And then they'll look at the prospects for that case going forward, and then on that basis they'll rate it. So they'll also look what at the we get age originally of, uh, might not sentence. really be the truth. It never is. Because gotcha. when we, we actually we actually went to underwriting on one and we found out that it was you know, I might be wrong, but I want to say it was about one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year for exactly the same plan with okay. you know with the new company. Well, thank you for that. Um, yeah, but we do that every year, and, and basically okay. we get the same 
results and the caveat is always okay you know there's always because i know that we did that as a board a few times yes. and just don't remember doing that for a while but thank you it clarifies that for me okay uh may we we'll call now hey karen yes carolyn carolyn yes unmute okay yes. okay thank you dennis yes Diane. yes patty yes linda yes okay. yes Okay, that passes, and we'll go on to the next item regarding health insurance. And this is item number G. And uh, now I need a motion to approve the recommended price tags, that is, price tags for employees to be charged for health insurance beginning on July 1, 2018, and ending on June 30, 2019. Patty? Motion. Okay. Second. Second by Linda. This is on page 96, and it concerns the split between the district and the employees for health care costs. And, you know, I um, <clears throat> know that you just told us a little bit ago that we're getting a reduction in health, for mm -hmm. health insurance. That's correct. I remember at the last meeting I was incredulous that we were actually getting yeah. a reduction. It's the first time I've seen it in my career. Uh, and me too. Uh -huh. Me too. And I've been, you know, working with government bodies uh, and looking at insurance costs for many, many years, and I've never seen this happen either. So anyway, um, this um, reduction in costs is partly enjoyed by the district and partly to a small extent enjoyed by the employees that is proposed here. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, so we can look at the last item and see how much each employee paid during 2017-2018 and then we can... Yeah, so right? I just wondered, I could ask okay. a question when you're finished. Okay, um, I'm basically finished. So, so again, uh, I, I, I think I'm missing something here. So if I was working here at the library and I had to pay health insurance, are you saying that my monthly deduction on my paycheck, or my, or you get paid here twice a month, right? Correct. So, so is, is this, this is for a month, right? That's correct. So, so it's, it's, it's basically, you're saying that every month uh, you're deduct, or every, um, Pay period, you're deducting about twenty-three some odd dollars out of out of my paycheck for. Uh, All right, and that's just that's right. I think you made a misread. Yeah, well, that's why I'm, I'm just yeah. trying to better understand. Uh, so for the month, a single employee would pay ninety-four dollars. Uh, per payroll, they would pay forty-seven dollars. So they pay oh, okay. forty-seven dollars. Okay, I see what you're saying. Twenty-four times a year. So, so for a month, so, so. You know, we'll just keep it even, work it up to 100. So every every pay period, you're taking fifty dollars out for health insurance. Mm -hmm. Fifty dollars. I, I just want to be able to communicate that out, talk with my friends as, as I go around because I don't know where you're getting health insurance for fifty dollars a month, uh, fifty dollars a pay period. I, I think that's absolutely incredible. <laughs> I think for the positive or the negative? Oh, it's 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 a positive. You know, I think if, if somebody is getting insurance, you know, for fifty dollars a pay period, I think that's well, terrific. I pay eighteen, just let me know. Yeah, well, and you're work and, and you're working where? District two hundred seven. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'm just thinking that in some in, in, you know, in many business business but world this locations. Isn't a, but this isn't a business. Yeah, I, this is non for profit. But where are you getting the money from? Here, let, let me get my wallet out. Okay. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. 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 And I, I just, I just, I'm just, I just, I just, I'm just trying to make it perfectly clear in my head. We from apples to apples, and we're talking not for profit. And yeah. And I work at the same not for profit organization. I, I know. Exactly. I, know. I pay. I know. I'm just letting you know. I know. That's terrific. I think it's terrific. It's. I just hope the public also understands. Yeah, I'm sure they do. When they're when they're looking to make a cut. Okay. Um, I have a in, in light of Dennis's fifty comment. dollars. I'm mm -hmm. sorry, I'm talking now. All right, go ahead. Oh, thank you. Um, how comparable? So I hear Dennis talking about business. Obviously, this is not a business. Um, do we? Um, obviously. Not. Well, yeah. <laughs> obviously, right? It's not a business, so I don't think we should compare it to businesses. When we compare our rates to comparable libraries, what do we come up with? Um, yeah, it's it's all over the board. Um, uh, 
uh, in the uh, Laconi survey that's done annually, uh, we have information from last year. Uh, we don't have this year's yet. It's being uh, completed, vetted, and published. But um, out of um, 111 libraries that responded to the survey, uh, 24 of them uh, pay 100%. Um, I believe. I believe. You another, mean the library pays 100%? Yes. Yeah, it's uh, no cost to the employee. Wow. For, I, for a single? Uh, uh, for single or all, I'd have to wow. I'd have to pull it out and take a look at it. And that's huge. I, there were not very many that paid all for, for, for the whole family. Yeah. Oh yeah. For, 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 for the family. I've seen it a lot. I've seen it a lot. Single. Okay. Um, I, I think the uh, next tier from ninety to one hundred uh, contained uh, somewhere around fifteen or eighteen. And then I can't remember after that. I, I have I have that uh, in a file on my computer. Uh, but you know the the idea is is that um, in fact you know there there are more far more generous programs out there than uh, than what we're doing. Uh, in the interest of trying to see where we were uh, on the spectrum, I did a couple of things. Um, in the back page of the village's annual financial report. Uh, they have a list of the top ten employers in the village boundaries. So I took that, I took that list and I got all the phone numbers for it, and I tried calling them to make a comparison and see what you know, to see what for-profit businesses are actually uh, offering. Um, I was unsuccessful, okay, but what it, because a lot of them were publicly or were not publicly held, or if they were publicly held, it's a, it's a division that's working. Or, you know, so you know, you have to call Sacramento, California, or wherever the headquarters is, and uh, they were basically unwilling, unwilling to share. Uh, ten out of ten. Uh, so instead, what I did was I called the uh, like institutions around the village. So that included uh, the village, uh, 219, uh, 71, and the park district. Okay. And I, I, what I found is, you know, uh, as far as the health insurance program, the Village of Niles is a straight 15%, 85%. Uh, 15 to the employee, 85 to the uh, employer. 219 was 9% to the employee, 91% to the employer. And these are across the board. Um, District 71 was 22 and 78. And the Niles Park District, approximately five percent and ninety-five percent. Wow! And when I was looking at these numbers, you know, they didn't differentiate between single and family. It was basically across the board. Uh, so to put ours on an equal footing, I looked at ours across the board at, at the blended rate. Okay. So uh, when I did that. Uh, it's 14 and 86, 14 percent to the em employer, uh, employee, 86 to the employer. That's one thing. The other thing I looked at was uh, the Affordable Care Act. Um, what the Affordable Care Act says is that the lowest paid employee qualifying for insurance must have must be paying for health insurance at a rate not to exceed 10% of their gross pay. Okay, so so what, what does all of that mean? Well, for example, if uh, our lowest rate is eight dollars and sixty-two cents. Yeah. Eight dollars and sixty-two cents amounts to on an annual basis yeah. one thousand nine hundred and fifty hours, uh, results in about sixteen thousand dollars a year. 10% of that is 1600 Yeah. which if you back it across uh, 12 months, I think it's a $133 a month. So that's, you know, I mean, that's one way of looking at the ceiling. Our lowest paid employee that qualifies though is for around $11 or so. So you can do that kind of, uh, if you want to. But what I'm trying to say is, 
we can't just say 50% because that would take us to a level which puts us in violation of the Affordable Care Act. I, I agree. And that would be fine. Certainly 50% would be outrageous. The other, thing, um, the other thing that I looked at was um, our hiring patterns. Okay? So we're not a we're not a, a for-profit, we're a non-profit, we're actually a governmental entity. Yeah. But we do participate in markets. And one of the markets that we participate in is the labor market. Okay. So when you look at the labor market, um, you see things like, I can't even remember, no, I can't even remember, remember what the number is, but 3.9% unemployment or something like that. Um, it's unlikely that unemployment will go lower than that because every economy has a baseline unemployment that they refer to as structural unemployment. There's about 4% of the workforce that's always in flux. Mm -hmm. So when you, when you look at that and you look at the length of time it's taking us to hire uh, people to replace people who are retiring or decided to go somewhere else, it's taking longer and longer. Um, our, our price for labor is expressed in, uh, in two buckets. The first bucket, obviously, is a salary. How much do I get per hour? How much do I get per year? And then the second is uh, what kind of benefits are attached to the job. So at the moment, we see an extending uh, hiring timeline, uh, which if, you know, if we if we change the rates too much, we'll be you know kind of pricing ourselves to a point where it's even going to take longer, and that's kind of what we're seeing currently. So I mean, I, I offer that. I mean, you know, the board can discuss and obviously and, and do what they will, but that's the information. It, it, it's it's a great explanation. I just uh, believe that government agencies are grossly uh, have a much lower cost for their employees than the regular business world and me as a taxpayer would like to see some adjustment. I am an advocate for the library and I love your, your books and your programs but I'm just saying that it should be held open as an option to to bring things back in line. Uh, you know, I, I, I understand there's a hard time to hire people here, but there's a hard time to hire people in other locations too. So uh, uh, the length of time that you're, you're taking to hire shouldn't uh, I mean, that shouldn't be a factor of well, okay, if you want to have to keep my insurance costs real low. Okay, um, I have a question for you. I just have a question, and you probably have answered this before, but I don't remember. Is it just full-time employees that are mm -hmm. eligible? Mm -hmm. Are part-time employees eligible for this? Full-time uh, full employees are eligible. Uh, we have, I believe, uh, 45. Uh, full-time employees. I'd have to look at a census. If I'm off, it's only been one or two. So part-time? Uh, part-time part -time employees who work on average in excess of 30 hours per week are also eligible. Okay. Technically. 30 hours, you said? Yes. That's in the afford that's an affordable uh, affordable care act definition. Yeah, that's a great act. Um, Technically, though, isn't the definition of your part-time where they work a lot less than that? Well, so when we hire, uh, when we hire part-time employees, we try to hire them for less than 20 hours a week um, because that takes us out of the healthcare uh, bucket, but also takes us out of the uh, IMRF bucket. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we did have some employees uh, who uh, were already working and were hired uh, with the understanding that they would be working more than 30 hours a week. Um, the Affordable Care Act also says that you cannot adjust somebody's work schedule solely on the basis of taking them out of the insurance pool. Uh -huh. So we don't. You know, um, we have, I believe, eight of those employees. Um, not all of them take insurance. Um, 
you know, some of them are either co covered by their husband or covered by Medicare. Thank you. Um, all right, do I have any other questions or comments? I just wanted to. Um, I had a couple of questions mm -hmm. as everyone finished. Mm -hmm. um, I had some, but you go ahead, Carolyn. A um, couple things. Um, um, I, I heard Linda mention she covered a single. When did you say $18 is what you pay a month? No, no a paycheck. Okay. Um, I was wondering if maybe there's you know, a couple other variables that go into how much you pay for insurance depending on where you work. I don't know if everyone has Blue Cross and Blue Shield, especially today. There are so many plans out there, um, and I think depending on the type of insurance you're offered, it could certainly affect what your portion is that you need to pay. Um, I will admit, though, I'm a little perplexed by um, the information that Greg was given for District 219. I used to work for them, and my... Um, my health care was 30-some percent of my paycheck. It was really outrageous. But I have to say, maybe this Affordable Care Act has had an impact to make me now that's why it's less. But um, if we want to look at what our employees pay for health benefits, um, I think we also need to consider what their, their actual income is. Um, I'm not sure what the salaries are at the last time. But, um, I mean, there's, there's always room to change it, but I, I, I'm not really sure what someone's paycheck actually equals. Um, I think $18 is unbelievable. That's a great amount. Um, I, I, I don't know why it differs so much all over. All I can say is maybe it depends on the insurance policy. But um, maybe in the future we should try to curtail full-time or 30 hours to try to keep our costs low and then, you know, see what we can do. But um, I know these amounts seem low compared to, but I've always paid quite a bit for health care. So um, I, I'm amazed, but I still think maybe there's other variables, and that's why some policies are less and some are more. But um, that's all I have to say on that. Okay, thank you. Um, I was just going to conclude by saying that uh, I do think we have to keep the market in uh, mind when we're setting benefits, and I know at a pretty low point right now. So that is something people look at when they decide if they're going to take a job mm -hmm. or not. I also want to say that that um, I, I think that the fact that our insurance costs are not going up and in front are going down is, is really a boon here. This is great. Um, I One of the things I do for my job is negotiate for management, um, union contracts, and Health insurance is always a big argument because it's always been going up in the past. And there are debates between the parties as to which percentage management should pay or which percentage employees should pay. I think this this really is sort of an easy year in that our costs are going down. And I think this is great. So I think that uh, um, this is certainly we should, something we should approve. All right, ma'am, we'll go ahead. Sure. Yes. Um, I, I hear what other people are saying, um, okay. um, and I think we should not judge this by any of our own personal experiences, because everybody's personal experience could be across the board, either higher or lower, and I don't think that gives any kind of a real um, <clears throat> clear picture. Uh, I hear Dennis saying that government versus private and I hear you say the word I believe, I, what I need, and I, and I have a hard time making a decision about just what somebody believes, I, I want to see a study that says government versus private and see what that actually concludes. And I also believe that we really should be judging this. I'll, I'll tell you, I'm making, I'm paying I'm sorry, I'm several really, hundred I'm really dollars. Done. Dennis, I'm not done. Several see? hundred. Very nice. I'm not done. And if you had been listening except talking over time, I, I, said, I, need my yeah, I understand you need the material. I don't believe we should be making this decision based on our own personal experiences. Our own personal experiences are, are really beside the point. You could work for a rotten organization. You could work for a great organization. There are organizations that pay 100%. Listen, I'm not done, Dennis. Go ahead. Yeah, oh, thank you. Oh, yeah. oh very nice. Yeah, it worked for a while. Um, so, really, when we make these decisions, uh, let's look at 
uh, across the board, let's look at, at like Apple's tablets. And then let's really try to find um, data, not just personal feelings. Okay. Are you finished? Did you have a question or a comment? Yeah, I do have a question. On this item? On this item. Okay. So, Dennis, how much are you paying for your health insurance? I won't go into exact figures, but it's uh, several hundred dollars a month. And that's working for a very good company, a very prominent company called Kraft Heinz. And, and so $18, and, and, it, and it's, it's, not, it's, it's not about the library. But is that for your family or is it single? That's that's for for me and my, and okay, my wife. Okay, so it's family a whole different is different. No, but it's it's still apples to apples it's because not. because what you're paying here. I was paying six hundred for a family. Well, for so here, no, for here it's three seventy. I'm saying three seventy. It's very different. It's still very different. I understand, but you're talking. You're talking. So yes, and so paid forty two for for. Yeah, guys, it was Tim. It's got yeah, nothing to do with it. No, I'm, I'm just saying. I'm saying. Things. Is I am still talking. I'm saying that government-based, where they're taking money from the taxpayer, are traditionally paying so much less than they are in the real business world. Show no, it is that. true because Show my my, uh, my my two brothers both worked for the government. One was a deputy oh, sheriff. Whatever. One was a one was a paramedic, and they both would say. You're paying what for your health insurance? Right. So there's your personal data, sir. Wow. And, and I, I said, I don't believe we should go by personal data. Show me a, show me a study. Right. Show me the okay. evidence. Okay, all right. I think we need to, to cut this out. No, I don't. I don't think it really helps you know for what? us to tell a lot, talk about a lot of anecdotes. Yeah. We all have right. anecdotes. Sorry. But for we paid yeah. or a relative paid or this or that. Um, you know, at some point it might be Very interesting true. to look at the private sector versus the public sector, but frankly, we are the public sector. We need to compare ourselves with other public and, and, and sector Get your hand on my wallet, again. please. Well, you know, Dennis, you can uh, have your opinion on that, yeah, but I think we need to move ahead and vote on this. So I do have a motion on the table for item H. We have a roll call. Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Uh, I'm Bench. Dennis? No. Dennis. Patty? Yes. Linda? Hey, Kellen. Yes. Tim? Yes. I'm all right. All right. Um, last of all, we have a bunch of appropriations ordinance. Uh, do I have a here a motion to approve ordinance 18 01, tentative ordinance providing for budget and appropriations of the Niles Main District Library, Cook County? For the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2018, and ending June 30th, 2019. May I have such a motion? Patty, thank you. Second. And I have a second from Diane. Okay, fine. Um, last month, Susan said, uh, it, we, we had obviously, well, it wasn't really last month, it was earlier this month. It was two weeks ago when we had our budget review meeting. Um, we obviously spent a lot of time going over the budget line by line, asking questions and so forth. And um, as a result of our discussion, Susan uh, said she was going to review the furniture and fixtures line of the budget. Of course, I asked her to see if there was any other expenditures that could come out of the per capita grant, uh, which we know is going to go up for next year. Um, and um, so I want to uh, turn it over to um, Susan to ask what, if any, changes have been made in the proposed uh, tentative ordinance Thank for you. the coming year uh, since our last budget discussion two weeks ago. Sure. <coughs> well, just to be clear, we have not made any changes that because we did not want to do that without more direction. Okay. But we did go through all of the lines to see if there was anywhere else where we could uh, possibly defer something or put something into uh, per capita or pay things out of this year's per capita. May I say a few words first? Yes, please. Uh, before, we get, before we get to that, I, I wanted to draw the board's attention to some changes that were actually made to the tentative ordinance that you have in your package. I've highlighted them in yellow and included an explanation. Okay. Um, the, uh, the, uh, if, we, if we just take a right moment. Here. 
please? Yeah, if we just take a moment and page through, if we look on page uh, 99, um, we did find a math error uh, about the uh, top third of the page. Mm -hmm. uh, for vehicle expense, we included the actual cost of the insurance for the uh, upcoming year, for 1732. Mm -hmm. We had the original number of 1600 in that. In that line item, and of course that changes our uh, total operating uh, cost to five million eight eleven two zero eight on uh, on the ordinance. Reading down to uh, the bottom of page one hundred, um, there you see the uh, uh, audit numbers to reflect the the uh, audit engagement letter that the board just uh, approved, uh, along with. Uh, uh, $4,000 of actuarial costs for a total of $21,200. Uh, below that, you see the liability insurance, which was changed to reflect the liability insurance package that the, uh, that the board uh, voted on a, a few moments ago for $33,720. The explanation is on the following page. It's roughly uh, $2,700 more than what was budgeted there as a placeholder for $31,000. And then if you look at the uh, uh, workers' compensation, which is the next item on page 101, uh, the actual of the actual number of the package of uh, 26219 from the handover, which the board voted on, was included there. That was a uh, reduction of uh, roughly $2,700. And uh, then, of course, that changes the uh, total special funds total by about $4,700. Uh, so I wanted just to make sure that the board was aware of those items um, in, you know, in uh, an effort to make things fully transparent. So these actually highlighted changes were in our board pack, weren't they? Yes, they Both were. Both the original were, yes. and the... Uh, Newer one too. So, yes. so these are not additional changes. These are the changes that were in our board. Meeting. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. Now uh, we've had some handouts uh, that were been passed out to us. Um, Susan, do you want to yeah. talk about what these handouts are? Sure. Um, out of the software and licenses line, um, we have canceled the service that we have called Live Answers because we feel like we can put something ourselves that it would be just as effective in answering different comments. Um, we, as you know, uh, we were able to reprice our Adobe suite, um, so that is a reduction there that's reflected. Under the printing line, we just looked at all the things that people had requested and we decided that not all of them were 100% necessary, so we have pulled that back. If we find that over the course of the year that we do need some of them, they could potentially come out of the per capita grant. Uh, we did also move the money that we had put in for a website renovation, um, updating and renovation. Uh, we put that in per capita expenses. The promotional expenses we dropped down by $5,000, again thinking uh, we will ask the people that put in for those to put in for them again later if they st are still sure that they need them and potentially come out of per capita. Um, the supplies number we just felt was overall a little bit high and we thought we would might ask people to try to just be a little bit more frugal with their office supplies and see if that got us somewhere. Um, we moved some equipment costs to the current year and paid those, it, like the laptops that we talk, just talked about, so those are not now in this budget. And then we pulled a few more things out of the budget here. And then under furniture and fixtures, which I said I was going to review, um, there were some wish list items in there that I did end up picking out altogether. And then there are a few things that will be paid for out of per capita instead of out of the budget. So, and as you know, we have to spend all of the per capita money. So, um, there are things in the per capita budget that are more open ended that have to do with hiring temporary staff to do projects. And until the year goes on a little bit more, I don't know what the supervisors are going to end up putting in for that. We have a whole year to spend that money. So some of this is still fluid, but this does affect the bottom line of what we are asking for this year. Okay, um, just just to clarify the second handout that we hit, or the, actually the handout that was already at our place yes. when we came here tonight. Uh, what does this 
that represent? What are we looking at here? That is just the updated version of the document that you've gotten several times now. Okay, so this reflects the it, changes to the seven it, categories? It reflects the changes that Greg mentioned in here, but in not ordinance. in here. Oh. Okay. So, well, so what Susan just presented are items where we could potentially say, uh, as we went through, that, oh, have not, that have been not been woven into the budget numbers anymore. Okay. okay. All right. And the uh, so there's the same the the two columns on the left of the sheet that has the seven items on it. Yeah. Those are exactly what we saw in the budget last yeah. Yeah. week, yeah. and well, the first three columns actually, and then the fourth column, which says potential changes, that is a change that you're saying that um, you think you could live with a smaller amount than was requested in That's the budget. Right. Uh, so that would be a reduction from what the 2018-19 budget amount was. And I so, just feel so much more confident saying that we can pay things out per capita now that we've right. gotten this year's per capita check and also hearing that we got more money in the per capita grant. Right. Um, well, I understand that because I remember for a couple of years in the state of Illinois I did not have a budget. They were not cutting checks. Right. And people were not getting money. And I know, you know a lot of institutions were afraid, afraid to spend money or not getting reimbursed for money they did spend. So I understand where there was some uh, concern about that. Uh, but it seems like we did get it this year and we're hoping to get it this, next year and a little bit more next year too. Yes. So, okay. So these potential changes, if we were to make them, would result in reducing the budget by $98,000, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. And, and budget to budget, right? Would reduce the by 98000 Budget to budget, not actual. Last, this, the budget we're proposing for this year has been reduced by almost $100,000. That's what this is. Based off of what you budgeted for last year. No, based no, off no, of no, this no. year's no. budget. So, no. Dennis, for example, if we budgeted a uh, million dollars this year, yeah. now you're suggesting the budget should be 900000 I understand. Yeah. Okay. So, but but it, has what nothing, did you, it has nothing to do with last year. So what did you actually spend, and why are you why are, you know if you if you only if you budgeted for a million you only spend eight eight hundred thousand and then this year you come in and you say okay we're we're going to cut that and we're going to budget for nine hundred thousand and you only spent eight hundred thousand last year actuals you know it, sure it's a savings but you know in reality you shouldn't be asking for taxpayer money in a million dollar to begin with so. Well, I think but it can't be even before, I mean, even before they came in with these reductions, the budget for 27-2018 was 7.088, and the new budget for 18-19 is 7.079. So even before they proposed these further reductions, the budget was less than it was for the year before. We don't know what our final expenses will be until the fiscal year is over. We can't possibly calculate that until after June 30th is passed. Yes. So our budget was already less than it was for this past year, and now they're suggesting that it be reduced by about a hundred thousand dollars more. So it will come out closer to six point six hundred six hundred six million nine hundred thousand as opposed to what it is. Is that calculated? Off the top of my head. Could I uh, ask a question? Yes, Carolyn. Could we get clarification on what the bottom line number will be? Because I'm not seeing six million. Oh no! If you didn't, I don't know. Carolyn has this most recent handout, does she? Uh, yes, I do. Okay. So I'm looking at the deduction of the subtraction of ninety-eight thousand five thirty. But isn't our budget line item seven million four hundred thousand six fifty? I just want to know what now would be the new um, budget amount for 2018-19 with your um, um, additional deduction. I came up with the different numbers on the $6 million for the yeah. yeah. So, um, uh, oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. I apologize. When I was talking, I was talking about revenues. I apologize. I was not oh, looking at the bad figure. No, I'm, sorry, I'm very sorry, sorry Carolyn, and everyone else that I might have confused by that comment. I was looking at the budget revenues, not the total uh, budget expenditures. Um, so, sorry. It's okay. So I came up with, I just want to make sure this is correct. So then our, our new budget total will be $7,400,000. 
uh, special reserve for uh, laptop computers, and we had estimated that they would, you know, that they would cost uh, twelve hundred dollars a copy. There were eleven of them. Yeah. And uh, uh, the board just approved this evening uh, the purchase of uh, twelve laptop computers. Okay. They turned out to be a little bit more expensive, but just shy of uh, twenty-one thousand dollars if memory serves. Uh, so since we actually uh, made the purchase now, yep. this year, to come out of per capita, yep. there was no longer a need for that $13,200 to be in the special reserve equipment. Okay, so you're saying now you're going to take this $13,200 and you're going to subtract that away from the $183? Uh, that's correct. If, if, if the board is, if, if this body decides that that's what they want to do. So, so we're down to what, $170 now? And so special reserve equipment is for laptops uh, and... Uh, uh, well, some of the bigger projects that are in there, uh, we have a uh, $60,000 item to address uh, security cameras uh, throughout the building as well as uh, electronic locks on the doors. Uh, we electronic also, locks on... Well, like, you know, something that's activated, activated by a fob as opposed to a key. Uh, an electronic key, if you will. Uh, we also have $40,000 in that line item that is related to uh, the implementation of a new phone system. Our phone system is, uh, is no longer supported and it's becoming harder and harder to find parts for it. And we do these boards once in a while. There. I, you know, I, I, I know it's it's, it's one hundred seventy thousand dollars is a, is a lot. Any other comments or questions? Do we know Do we know what we used in the actuals last year for that? Uh, those uh, Those are uh, are specific to year. They're project based. Yeah, no. Um, so if you look at the financial statements uh, in your package, um, what you'll see is that, uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, this year, uh, on page 15, uh, special reserve equipment, uh, we spent $5,809. $5,809. And so this year we're budgeting 170. Yeah, I, I think I believe some of the items that weren't pursued in 2017-18 uh, rolled over to 18-19. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, I mean that's another classic case of why we can always say we're under budget because we are under budget. We yeah. we propose a budget and then we don't spend and we say oh we're under budget we're under budget. Well, this is a little bit of a special case. Uh, periodically, we uh, survey the building, and, uh, like every five years, and um, uh, we look at uh, uh, three major components. We look at the mechanicals of the building, we look at the equipment in the building, and then we look at the envelope of the building, including the roof and, and so forth. Yeah, well, yeah. And, then, and then we make a, a judgment, usually, if we usually hire an engineer. Uh, we make judgments based on, for example, chiller. Um, yeah. Five years ago, we said the chiller probably was about a four to eight year item, and here we are five years hence, and we're talking about replacing it. So when we do that, and we identify those items, what we uh, do is transfer money into an account called a special reserve account. I, 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 I remember. Okay, so what I'd like to ask is there's, if there's a consensus from the board uh, about reducing uh, the proposed budget um, by the potential changes outlined by the staff, if those uh, potential reductions in the budget are something that the board would like to see in the tentative ordinance. Um, if I can have, a, you know, just go around the room if you, uh, or I can ask for a show of hands. I'll ask for a show of hands. If anybody has any questions, they can ask, yeah, ask them. Okay. okay, say again what's your... Um, this is yeah. to uh, make the changes to the budget 
According to this, right? According to the sheet that we've given tonight, reducing the budget by the potential changes outlined on this handout, which would reduce the budget in seven categories as outlined here. Uh, and again, uh, as based on our comments and concerns as expressed at our last meeting, the staff has gone back and looked at these items again and uh, decided that uh, they can get by with less in each one of these categories for the coming year. Um, so if I can have a show of hands to ask that the tentative budget be reduced by these amounts, I would ask for that show of hands now. Okay, I see a majority of the board members. We need to find out what Carolyn is doing. Oh, Carolyn, can you hear? Are you raising your hand? No. <laughs> yes, yeah, I, I agree with the question. Okay, fine. All right. So, um, what I understand has been done so far, now the next thing we need to do is, is vote on the tenant of ordinance. But um, what's been done so far is a newspaper or, uh, advertisement, or rather notice, has been placed in the newspaper, as Diane mentioned in her secretary's report, telling the public that there's going to be a public hearing at our next meeting, June 20th, where they can come by and comment on the budget if they wish to do so. Uh, and it also tells the public in that notice that they can come to the district offices starting tomorrow to look at that tentative budget. But the tentative budget that will be available to the public will reflect these changes that we are making this evening, reducing the proposed tentative budget by $98,000. Are we having any other additional discussions about the budget? Um, we, right now, is that what you're asking? Yeah. I mean, there will be uh, discussions on your 30th, but yes, right no. now? No, today is Yes, easy. did you want to say something further about the budget? Yeah, see, okay. you know, that's, <laughs> I see that you're talking about this one page here, but there's, I, I stood up there, uh, I don't know how long ago, and talked about a number of areas where we could make drastic cuts. Mm -hmm. You're not even making, this is a $7.4 million budget, mm -hmm. and you're talking about cutting $100,000. Mm -hmm. Have you lost your mind? I have not lost no, my mind. No, you know, I don't think so. I mean, no. we could be talking about adding $100,000 or adding $200,000. There's nothing that says a public body has to constantly cut its budget. It could increase its budget, too. There's nothing that says we automatically have to cut anything. You're driving. We could be increasing it. I am very pleased that our staff is being frugal and actually cutting the budget. Um, and, you know, that's not something that uh, boards necessarily do. Your, so, your no, salaries wipe this money. out. Your salary increase this year wipes this out. Well, your savings yes, wiped out. Yes, if he's got a proposal. Do you, do you have a proposal, I, or proposal or something? I like do. You? All right, what is My it? proposal is that we should look at a 5% cut and be able to present that uh, for a vote to okay. the board. Okay. All right. Cut of what? I have the budget. Are you talking across the board? What are you talking? A five percent total cut off of the off of off of seven million. Okay. All right. Um, so we've already received a, we've reached a consensus that the proposed budget should be reduced by ninety eight thousand. Uh, is there a show of support, or do I? Well, I, I'm asking for raising for board members to raise their hands if they support a five percent cut. Uh, or any of those proposals that I talked about. Let's be specific. Well, All right, hang on. Okay, I'll, I'll be specific. No, no, let's start with one at a time. We listened to you for how long already? Yeah, and I have that. another one after that, too. Oh, Jeff. Oh, okay. 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 Follow procedures. I understand why it's difficult to follow the procedure. And that was a personal comment. Yeah, that was a personal comment. What? When you spoke. That was a public comment. This is, that's not public. Okay, business. sure. Five percent, and, and so we'll go ahead and we'll vote on that proposal. I've got another proposal ready after that. Because I, I asked within this, I asked within this, and I didn't get all the way through it because, you know, I was at, I was at my five minutes. You know, all right. Well, let me uh, go ahead and ask. Is yeah. there uh, a show of support? May have everyone raise their hand. Who is in support of cutting the budget across the board by 5%? Okay. 
Uh, Carolyn, is that something that uh, you support? We can't see whether you're raising your hand. I think five percent would be um, a positive number. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I presume, Dennis, you're raising your hand. I don't see it raised, but I presume. Yes. Okay. I, 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 I would love to see the 5% cut. Okay. All right. I don't see a uh, majority uh, supporting a 5% cut. So, okay. Okay. <laughs> and I forget that. So, so my other proposals were to cut money for the new furniture. So I understand that that's already been reduced some. Yes. I, you know, I, I think this year, you know, uh, there's many a times when people have budgets that they make their cuts. I, I think we could forgo any any money in that new furniture. Okay, let's talk about that. And we'll so, so, all right, okay, okay. go ahead. So, because I, I, I have a couple of yeah, so. That's fine, but I all think right. we should oh, take just a minute. Just out of curiosity, how many do you have? I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, well, why don't you make them all, and okay. yeah. I'll um, okay. ask if there's okay. a support for any one of them. Yeah, yeah. And okay. if there's support for any one okay. of them, then we can break that one out. Okay, discussion. sure. So my other proposal was to put a salary freeze in place. And uh, that would save us $102,000 right off the bat. Uh, our go to green, so uh, protect our environment. Everybody is interested in go to green. And so our chapter one is still a print-based option. I would suggest that we try to eliminate the chapter one in the printed format. We, we, we voted on that, you know, or I talked about it. We didn't vote on it, but I talked on it. And, and, and people said they were going to go ahead and try to reduce it. And now they're, they're looking to, to add to it and increase the budget in that space. So, so I'm asking to, to go ahead and please you know, phase it out over two years. Let's go green. Come on, we're new technology. Uh, cut promotional spending. So promotional spending, uh, you know, uh, it, it, there's a lot of nice things here. I agree, there's a lot of nice things here. But, you know, Christmas tree lights, t-shirts, you know, giveaways at events, whether they're food or, or trinkets. And I understand my kids probably got those trinkets okay, when they were they small. Okay, just, we I'm just, just trying to help just you. Just make your statement. Okay, I'm sorry. You're already at almost at o'clock. I thought this meeting would be, we'd get out of here earlier than we did last okay. week. Okay, all right, I'll try to, I'll, I'll speed it up. I'm just trying to help you. Yeah, you're talking, talking, talking. Get to the all point. All right, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, so uh, cut the adjustment line item. Uh, for ten thousand dollars for bonuses, uh, cut the trustee funding down to zero. zero. Yes. Uh, cut time and a half out on Sundays for employees. UPS and many other businesses do the same thing, and they have the same struggle trying to get employees. So uh, my my uh, you know uh, thought would be to cut that. Uh, eliminate comp time for salaried employees. Uh, cut library open hours. Uh, you know, uh, can we not start at a later date uh, based off of metrics? You know, do we have to open at nine o'clock? Uh, uh, increase employee payments to their health plan. Uh, yeah, I know. I just mentioned it. Uh, Go, uh, go green, so, you know, do a scan to mobile or start a campaign uh, or a competition to encourage smarter printing among staff. Uh, eliminate uh, a vacation day, uh, pay for a vacation day uh, or a sick day uh, to help reduce costs. I, you know, these are just examples. So those, those were, were my proposals to try to get some type of... Uh, 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 a uh, cut in, in the budget that's you know close to five percent. So. Okay, all right. Uh, Dennis Martin has listed a number of uh, ways in which you'd like to see the budget cut. I'd like to see a show of hands of those who think we ought to uh, adapt any of those uh, further cuts to our proposed budget. And Carolyn, you'll have to say whether or not you're raising your hand. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we can't see you. Yeah, oh, no problem. Um, I would um, I would support his recommendations for. Uh, uh, you're you're dropping okay. out there. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. 
And Dennis, I presume you're raising your yeah, hand yeah. too. Okay, fine. Um, I, I don't see a majority of supporting any of those further cuts to the proposed budget. Um, so I think we need to um, then move on with the motion, which is on the floor, which is to adapt the tentative ordinance as amended by the changes that the majority of no, the I'm board sorry. members. I have a couple of questions about the as well. About what? I had a couple of questions regarding the budget. I had hoped that the item would have been placed on the agenda. When I didn't see it, I just figured it would be on our old business. So can I ask a couple of questions about a couple items? <coughs> right, what are your questions? Uh, one is regarding chapter one. Um, in our last uh, budget meeting, the graduate committee just laws that have been left in the uh, condo. Um, yes, the board, the the we can't understand you. We can't hear you, Carolyn. Kind of Determining that based on that um, outcome of already distributing them once a quarter, why would we increase the cost when we're already suffering such a, I mean, a loss of just the printing and the items aren't even reaching the, the, the residents? So we're trying to understand why we would increase their cost when it's not even working quarterly. Well, I mean, the studies that we have done, uh, where we have informally asked people where they heard about the particular program they were at, we find that a great many people, and particularly seniors, are very much using Chapter 1. There are pockets that are where it's not a very effective way to communicate, but there are many people for whom it is the best way to communicate. But by increasing your distribution or, or your current, you're going to, what, you're more than double your cost now, and I'm not sure if what your group is going to reap any benefit so that you can take performance. And, I, and you know, I didn't ask you Carolyn, not, Carolyn, we're not actually voting tonight whether or not we're going to print Chapter 1 any more. I had a couple of that. questions about budget items. All right, do you have something other than Chapter 1 questions? No, I'm not finished. So, um, Susan, I know we spoke uh, a month ago, and I asked you to questions about the cost for distribution, because it's something to do with carriers. And right. I was wondering what that cost right now is, because that will also increase. I'm saying these are things we should consider before we think of, you know, already taking something that's not working and is quite expensive. But moving on, my next point is, um, we all know that I have asked repeatedly for um, descriptions or detailed um, and one of the items I was interested in was the department operating budget. And I have to tell you, I am still quite upset that for years, as trustees, we were misled to believe that such a document existed. And it didn't. So we haven't even been evaluating our program to prepare this budget. And I feel that I've been deceived so many times because you insisted that you had department operating budgets and then it found out in January that you don't. So it's really hard for me to put a lot of faith in this budget process because we don't have one. Do you have a question, I mean, Carolyn? Or or Carolyn, do you have a question? Of a full-time um, a temporary full-time employee to relieve someone on maternity. Um, I think the position was called acquisitions. That's correct. And I was trying to find out. Um, I think you said we have two people in that position. Right. It's, where? Where is? Is this upstairs in administration or? No, it's in technical it? services. It's in the department that it, orders all of the materials. It, so this is, this materials meaning the, the library materials that we've been discussing, the books and the AV or? Right. Is that what it is? That's correct. Okay, and I have to tell you, we've talked about personnel and re reviewing, reevaluating job sharing. We have 100 full three people. And we couldn't find a current employee or employee that we could have trained to do this. We had to bring in additional payroll. I don't understand why we still aren't there. 
Now there's a cost I don't think we need it. And you did tell me it's new software, you know, it's really new, but we're still bringing in an outsider. I'd like to think our staff is qualified. We discussed that last week. Yeah, yes, we yeah, did we discuss it. All right, Carolyn, do you have any other comments or, or questions? That are new. That are new. You know, I'd like responses okay. to my question. Right, I, I think we've got those responses. The situation is why I'm asking it. The Carolyn, fact that all this has been asked meeting left. after meeting. We're getting tired of hearing the same questions. You are extremely qualified. I'm thinking when someone leaves for a few months, we could do something. Okay, we, we need to call this for a vote. Um, I understand the motion is on the floor to adapt the tenant ordinance, ordinance 18 01. We can call the roll. As amended, correct? As amended, correct. That is correct. As amended by the handout, which lists the seven categories to be reduced. All right, uh, Karen? Yes. Carolyn? No. Dennis? No. Diane? Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Yes. Okay, all right, that passes, and that will be uh, addressed during our next meeting for the final passage. All right, uh, any unfinished business? Any other? All right, then I will now attend a um, motion. Enter entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. Patty, I can guess the motion you're making. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Diane is the second. Uh, would you please call the roll? Uh, Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Dennis? Yes. Diane? Yes. Yeah. Betty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Yes. Okay, just a final reminder, our next meeting will start at 6.55 because we will have a public hearing scheduled on the budget as required by uh, statute, and then we'll have the meeting itself start at 7 as we usually do. Thank you. Seven or whenever the or whenever the public comments are hearing Because we never know. You never know how many people may or may not have. Okay, that's it for this evening. Thank you all.